Class 22-014. How are we doing this morning? Great. Good morning. Good morning. Great, Sam. How are morning. You? Good. Fantastic. I love it. Thank you. Let's see. Let's get those cameras turned on. Clevin, Shana, Selji, Lester. Who we got? We got people missing. There's Shana. Shana, your uh, your MG sent me an email. Said you made phone calls on Friday. Why are you reporting zero? <laughs> And I didn't make calls on Friday. We watched um, a presentation. Uh, okay, so you were right and he was wrong. Good. Love it. Sherry Brecken, welcome back. How are you? I'm kind of sick, but I'm okay. I'm oh, alive. Goodness, I'm so sorry mm -hmm. to hear that. You're going to be able to make it through today? I'm going to try. <clears throat> okay, that's all we can ask, right? All right, let's go to Emily Johnson, my go-to. Emily Johnson, what are we doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Today we are going to role play closing with HP Pro, overcoming common rebuttals and objections, Q&A, visual walkthrough presentation, presenting plans in HP Pro, heavy Ooh. hitter drop-in, 45-minute workshop, in-depth closing with a 15-minute Q&A. Wait, no, wait, wait. Awesome. Yeah, I've got Eddie Leon is going to join us. And he has a very, very high close rate. So I think this is an opportunity for us to kind of listen to him talk about what he does in order to close at the highest level and how he conducts workshops with his crew in order to do that. So that's all good. Uh, how many people sat through presentations yesterday? One, two, three, four. Four of you. Hmm. How many people made calls yesterday? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Did you get mm. my email, Sam? Or my emails? I said. Yes, Tracy, I did. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have to do is fill out our DRB report, right? We want to get that done. Ba, 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 ba. So give me a second to bring that one up and then we'll fill that out. Hey, today's Tuesday. You only have four more days with me and then you are all on your own with your uplines. <laughs> Lester's happy. He's like, thank God. Getting tired of listening to that voice. <laughs> all right, let's go here. Let's go there. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh, nice, Corey. You made calls. That's great. All right, please fill out the DRB report. All of you can fill it out for me right now. That would be great. I would appreciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're on Tuesday. All right, so while you are all doing that, I'm going to try to, I just got a, my first ever iPhone last night. So forgive me, I don't know how to silence it. Let's see, is there a button on there? Oh, cool, silent mode, all right. Congratulations, Sam, welcome to the Apple Club. Right, hey, I have a, Thank I have goodness. a Samsung Note 10. I still have it actually, and this is now my business line. So I'll put this on my sig pic, but uh, yeah, my three kids have been giving me a hard time forever that I don't have an iPhone. You gone to the dark side, bad move. Yeah, but that's why it's on my business line. My personal line is still under Samsung. And since I pay for a ridiculous number of lines, I used to have a uh, tablet that had a, a you know phone number and all that. So I don't use that anymore. So I changed that over to a uh, iPhone. So we'll see how it works out. 
All right. Anyway, let's go back. Clevin, I'm sorry to hear that. Clevin's at care. All right. Let's go over to here and let's see what's doing. How many people had a chance to practice their presentation last night? And it's okay if you didn't. I'm just curious. So Leslie did, Sandra did, David did. Oh, a lot of you practiced last night. Nice. That is awesome. You know, practice definitely makes perfect. Have you um, had anybody do the presentation rubric? Not yet, right? But I've given it to you, right? You have the presentation rubric, so you know kind of how you're going to be graded. Okay, excellent. Excellent. All right, let's take a look at this. Doing submissions. How many? We got 19, and that means there's 18 in the class, which means I should have 18 submittals. And I have 15. So three of you still need to submit, please. I must say, as a class, you guys are very consistent. I appreciate it. There's always folks who uh, take their time. So like I said, I appreciate that. All right, let's go back. Let's see what's doing here. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, let's go back here. Corey. You worked out the screen share issue. Awesome. Show us how you share your screen so we can see the whole thing now. Uh, okay. Actually, let me give you the ability to do that. You, you can show us anything. You're not having to do any work. I just want to make sure it works for you. Okay. I'm just seeing. Okay. You don't have to talk. You don't have to talk. I know you're not doing well. A lot of folks are sick today. So Sherry, Corey. Let's go to around, the doctor said. Stop talking. Sorry. Hit the mute button. <laughs> I don't want you to overstand. Oh, yeah, and Tracy Hall is not feeling well either. Holy mackerel, everybody. All right, so there, yeah, is that the, yeah, that's perfect. That's huge, actually. Very nice job. Okay, you can stop sharing now. So that is absolutely stellar. All right, so we're going to talk about closing today. So we went through A1 through A5, and then we went through B through all the way to D. And D, we get to the closing question, right? So those of you that have been practicing in D, how are you transitioning to the close? Let's ask, let's see, Leslie, were you practicing? I was practicing. I didn't get all the way to the close um, last night because I was stuck on a problem that I was having in the plan generator. Um, What's the problem? So I don't know if it's just my computer glitching out or what's going on, but when I am working on a single individual, someone who does not have a spouse or significant other, mm -hmm. and I am going to allocate their remaining, it will not allocate in all of my prices. I changed the dollar a day for silver, bronze, and gold, made sure all of that was correct. I hit allocate on all three and it does not allocate. It, it actually, every single time I hit allocate, it increases or decreases the amount each time I allocate. And I could not get that figured out. Everything I had in the needs analysis was correct. Everything okay. in the plan generator was correct. So I wasn't sure. So we're going to uh, talk about closing. Can you spend a little time and bring up, and don't show us yet, but kind of get your HP Pro to that point so we can all take a look at it and see sure. if anybody else is running into it? I'm actually almost there. Okay. So when we talk about the close, you know, finalizing the presentation, D1, right? So now's the time, you know, we ask, is this the first time someone's gone over the BSO benefits with you? We get the response back. And then we let them know that even though your enrollment started a while ago, uh, when you either filled out your card, this is when we're talking specifically about return cards, folks who are part of the BSOs. You know, we say we can't go back and cover you for younger rates or things that happened before you start the program as of today, which makes sense, right? So now when you're qualified and enrolled, it would come out once a month. So now we're talking about taking the draw because in the old days, um, it used to be every two weeks out of a paycheck, right? And maybe the veterans a little bit older, they're used to that. So we want to let them know that in fact, it's going to come out every month, right? 
So then in yellow, and I'm looking at the presentation. Um, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the presentation. Hold on one second. Let me share my screen. And right there, right? Oh, that's a trip. Can everybody see my presentation? Yes. How come I can't see it? That's really weird. All right. Anyway, so that's the presentation, right? So in yellow down here, you know, let's face it, we're all going to do pathway. There's something we don't have any choice in control. It's simply comes down to the veterans like yourself taking care of something like this now or become a burden that's likely to be placed on your family in the future. So that's the beginning of the close, right? We have now said, hey, here's all the information. Now if we can get you qualified. So this is the giving and then taking away, right? Everybody see that? The giving and the taking away? Okay. So then we go to the beneficiary button, right? And we say, hey, this is going to come to family for funerals and final expenses. Who do you want? Blah, blah, blah. Now we're talking about the budget. So now this is the definitive close. I call it a soft close because you're not asking them to buy something yet. You're just saying, hey, <laughs> what's going to fit your budget the best? Because it doesn't matter <clears throat> to the VSO which program you or any veteran product qualified job for. My job is to customize the benefits to fit your needs, right? So now they're thinking about the money, or at least you're pointing them in that direction and think about the money. They just need to know that you want to be like most veterans or go with what they're recommending. That's the plan I show you, setting aside X amount. Now, some veterans do get super excited and ask if they can set, a, set aside more, and that's going to be X. So how many options are on your screen at the time you do this? And let's ask Shana. Am I muted? Can you guys not hear me? Anybody? I, I hear you. I can hear you. Okay, Shana, how many options are on your screen when you're talking about the budget? Three. Exactly, right? Uh, gold, silver, bronze, you know, good, better, best, depending upon how you want to name it. So you have the one that's being shown to the client. Which one is that, Shana? The recommended one. Right, you're showing the recommended, and then you're asking, or do you want to be like, you know, folks who will get excited and they want to be able to set aside more? And then you show them the up one, right, or the gold. Do you, at any point before that, show the bronze? No. And why is that? Because we wouldn't want to show them that option unless they wouldn't be able to afford the recommended or the enhanced one. Okay, perfect. And so if I were to tell you, hey, uh, the 30417 is just way too much. What is the next thing you say, Lester? Is the 30417, that's the gold, right? I'm sorry, the silver. Oh, oh that, yeah, silver. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that's way too much, then we then show them the bronze or ask them, you know, what they could afford, go back and manipulate to get it to what they can, uh, pause the screen, manipulate to whatever they can afford, and then present that. It perfect, right? You don't want to go to the bronze unless you're not comfortable doing the manipulation and you're okay with dropping the price down. Now, some of us, uh, I think I was doing a role play with somebody yesterday and they were saying they made like 16000 a month or something like that. So in that case, would you start with $5 a day, OJ? If somebody told you their budget is 16000 a month, I mean, their income is 16000 a month. Wait, you're saying start with what? So I'm saying if in the no, I'd probably like be bumping that up, like because okay. that's that's a bigger budget, right? There's more money there theoretically, right? So I'd show a higher number and I'd probably adjust the script accordingly. Hey, one from fifteen, and let's show you around eight to nine or whatever you think makes sense. So if that's the case, and you move it up and you build the three plans, then your bronze plan can still make you a lot of money, right? However, good folks who are trying to close at the highest level will always 
ask the question. Now, Eddie typically does not. We'll talk to Eddie later today. He likes his people just to go gold, silver, bronze and move right into the bronze. It's up to you how you want to do it. The most important part is actually closing the deal. All right. We don't want to close the deal at $2 a day. But if we have the chance to close at a higher level, we attempt to do that. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so I'm going to have you all do this close with me, and I'm going to be the buyer. We're going to go one at a time. But first, let's go back to, uh, I'm sorry, Leslie. Was she the one that having the issues? Leslie, can you share your screen with us? Uh, boom. Okay. Here we are. <clears throat> Can you talk us through it? Sorry. I did not realize I was not unmuted. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So I haven't finished, uh, creating these two plans, the bronze and this and the gold plan yet, but That's fine. so for instance, here I am right here. We have a 63 year old male. He's got mm -hmm. a $4,700 uh, monthly income mm -hmm. and usually, you know, he's an individual. So in this case where they're a single person, they have no spouse. So mm -hmm. would, would you start off with a triple individual to make the amount of coverage go higher? For the silver? Yes. Yeah. I would okay. put that at triple to show that the accidental death <clears throat> and smoke recovery is really high. And Correct. then I build the gold at like quintuple, and then I would build the bronze at double. Okay, so now I know that as a senior, I think their coverage is, I'm sorry, that has changed a little bit. I think their coverage is 34,999 is the highest they're able to go, right? In general. Mm -hmm. So wh what would you put right here for it to be a single? Because you want the 34,999 to be the gold membership, right? Because that's the highest they can get. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. You want to drive that down, basically, right? Right. So put it at twenty thousand okay. dollars. Let's just see what happens. And then I go to allocate remaining, and he's at five dollars a day for the silver, and allocate. See how it goes Im immediately to negative three forty-seven. Yeah. Okay, and then I allocate. Quick finish. It's it deselected my whole life. Let me. Yeah, let me it's okay. It. it finished. And it's still at negative three forty seven. And, and it moved back to thirty five thousand. Okay, and it, and it changed back to thirty five thousand. Correct. And right, it, so the uh, price here should be I think three hundred four seventeen based off of a five dollar day um, approach, and it's two fifty four. Well, it's using a eight dollars and forty seven cents, right? That's what it's at right now, not a five. So the, the, that is correct. The two fifty four oh two is correct because if you go to your left, mm -hmm. where it says used in the green, mm -hmm. that's at eight forty seven. So that's right. correct. Okay. The problem that we have that you pointed out is that the thirty five thousand should not be thirty five. So go back and change that to twenty. Change it to 19. 19, uh, right here. Yeah, I just want to see what happens. Change it to 19. Okay, now, now jump back to 35. You're right, and it's, it was doing that to me all night, and I could not get that figured out. So 19 ALP takes it down to 22. Do you want me to try to allocate that? Sure, you can try. It's only 58 cents off, right? Right, and then I, it immediately it, it already back. jumped back. Correct. So what it's doing is it's forcing you to sell $35,000 in coverage to John, and I don't know the answer why. Right, and that's what I was dealing with all last night, and okay, I could so not quick, figure it out. Click finish and change um, the coverage to $20,000, which gets us to close to $5 a day. Okay, and now what I want you to do is present the plan. Let's see if it shows up at 20 or if it jumps. It jumped to 35 already.
to jump to 35. All right, go back to the plan generator. Uh, can somebody else try to replicate this? Selji, can you try to replicate this for me and see if it does the same thing on your HP Pro? I think Clevin said he was having the same problems. Yeah, see, Jacob, what's up? Do you have an answer? I think I've had this problem before, and I think it's the type of insurance that's causing the issue. Or should oh. I change it from whole life to the SRG? Yeah, that senior, I didn't even notice that. That senior graded life, now it's $34.99. Now what I want you to do is allocate. Um, yeah, you're trying to sell a whole life product to somebody who's over age. Right. So now allocate. Huh. And there you go, finish. Okay. So for some reason, and I'm not sure why, it may have to do with the state. Certain states do allow us to sell a whole life product to a senior, but in most states, we wanna do a senior graded whole life because we wanna mitigate our risk. Okay. So, does so, everybody know the difference between senior graded and whole life? Yeah. Yeah, o OJ, tell us, what's the difference? Well, it's going by like what their remaining life expectancy is, you know, so that the risk is lower. Cause like someone that's, that's younger than 60 is obviously gonna live longer. So we, we have more options there and we can take more risk, but we're kind of expecting them to not live much longer. Well, so how do we, so the difference between senior graded and whole life, how are we mitigating that risk? Because we can have $15,000 of senior graded whole life and we can have $15,000 of whole life, right? So how well, there's do like we- There's like a scale that you use to, to measure like what kind of coverage and what the premium is going to be right there's like a like a scale well, we, we use a rate book yeah and the rate book is set a certain way but the graded part is the key so in a whole life if i take a whole life policy out on me right now if i die tomorrow the entire amount gets paid out if i take out a senior graded whole life on me if i was over the age of 60 in the first year only 25 percent pays out Second year, 50, third year, 75. And after that, 100% pays out. So that's how insurance companies mitigate their risk with folks who are older is that they limit the amount of coverage that will be paid out in the first three years. Now, the reason they do that is that, or the reason that the fourth year they do 100% is because they know mathematically with the number of people they expect to die, do the actuary tables, if you survive for at least three years, the odds that you're going to die in the fourth year are very low, and then enough premiums come in to offset us paying out whoever's passed away. Does that make sense? So that's the graded part, right? And that's why we do grading. Now, typically you see in the script, we don't really go through that with folks because we know that they're gonna last the last. They're gonna stay with us for at least another three years, right? But in the language that gets sent to the client, it very clearly states it's a senior graded whole life policy and it pays out 25, 50, 75. And then after year three, it pays out 100%. Does that make sense to everybody? Dominic, you got that? Because Dominic's been slinging this for a while. He gives me a thumbs up. Okay. So, Leslie, did we solve your issue? Absolutely. And that was the I only solve problem. Issue. Who do I give credit to? Was that uh, Jacob? That was Jacob, and I thank you so go, much. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right, so you can stop sharing, and we can go back to uh, working on the close. Okay, so you guys have heard of ABC, right? Always be closing. I'm not a big fan of always be closing because if you don't know what you're doing, you come across as really pushy right from the word go, right? So in your head you're always thinking about closing the deal. Uh, OJ, you've been very good. How do I start the close process in my mind from the moment I'm on the Zoom with a client? What is the first thing that happens in the script that makes us think about closing? You mean like from the very beginning of the script? Yep, from the very beginning of the script, how are we thinking? What are we saying that makes us go through that closed process?
It's, it, it's a little tough. I'm not expecting you to know the answer right away, by the way. I, it, it's just a thought process thing, right? So the second sentence, right after you do some warm up, right, is a, my name is Sam with American Income Life. We're the company that handles permanent benefits for all veteran service organizations across the country. So that second sentence, I'm now talking about permanent because I'm going to create a diversity between permanent and temporary, right? And then this it's is the first of, time. I mean, like I've, I've noticed it throughout the script, like you're very much like establishing, like this is something that we're going to do. We're not talking about like, this is going to be an option. Like I, I did notice that in the wording throughout the script that it's okay. Very so good. when we finish, when we do this, when we, you know, here's, here's the options you have. It's not if you want to, it's not if, if this, if you're comfortable with this, it's, this is what we're going to do throughout the script. Exactly. It's a taking an assumptive stance that you you as the client are going to go through and do this, right? And then we identify problems and provide solutions. So that's part of the entire close process, right? The first three things, hey, VSOs got together and there were some common concerns shared by all veterans. They want to make sure the family had the necessary updated contact information. They were asking how to make sure that their will and state information was updated. And they were looking into the VA burial benefits. So what am I doing? <clears throat> I'm creating a problem. I'm showing the solution. I'm giving it to you. And then I'm also giving you additional stuff that I then take away. All right. Hey, provided that you qualify, I can give you all this stuff, but I got to make sure you qualify. So the entire process, we're doing the close, but we're never asking until the very end. One of the uh, philosophies with sales is you get people to say yes, 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 yes. So that when you come to the question, you really want them to say yes to, they're more, theoretically, they're more predisposed to saying yes. Are you familiar with that, uh, Emily Johnson? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. And remember, in the entire process, we're giving them all this stuff. In fact, when we ask for um, the family information guide referrals, we don't even refer to them as that, right? We change the wording for referrals to sponsorships. And when we populate the family information guide, we're doing it on their behalf, right? We're going to pre-populate this for you, and then we're going to download it, and I'm going to email it to you. So we're providing a lot of stuff to people. So when we ask for the close, it makes sense. Uh, I'm sorry, show of hands, how many people have held a sales role in any kind before, whether it's retail, Taco Bell, doesn't matter. Everybody, everybody's had to sell. Sandra, you don't, you've never had to sell anything. Customer service, that's what you've done, right? Um, yes. So, and I have done some sales support years back, but nothing up front. All of mine has either been after the fact or prior to. So yes, I have a lot to learn from you, Sam. <laughs> okay. So we want to make sure that we're comfortable with asking the question. All right. So each one of you ask me to buy something. Let's start with Jacob. Go. I don't know what you want me to sell. <laughs> Is this an exercise in asking for the sale? Doesn't matter to me what you're trying to sell. Um, would you like to upside the upsize those fries? Okay, <laughs> Donaldo, ask me to buy something. Donaldo, can you hear me? Yes. Ask me to buy something. Okay. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Sam, I see you look very professional. It seems like you don't have a tie. We do have have actually a collection of ties here over at our store. Uh, would you like me to show you some some of them? Okay. Sandra Young, ask me to buy something. I am so glad you stopped. We have this organic honey on special today. How many jars would you like? Patrick. I, I know that you just purchased an iPhone, uh, but for a, an extra $20, you can actually get a, a protection plan on that. So in case anything happens, you'll be able to get a re free repair. David. 
So you've seen the value in our products today, Sam. What's stopping you from putting three more in your basket? <laughs> Dominic. Come on, uh, everybody. Be yeah. ready. Let's go, Dominic. We have some new frames um, for glasses. If you would like to check them out, we have uh, <laughs> brand new ones on our shelf. Just came in. <laughs> Thank you. Corey, can you talk, Corey? It's okay if you can't talk. I'll do it. Uh, thanks for coming in. We have um, chocolate and strawberry on sale today. Would you like to taste them before you buy? Okay, OJ. Oh, well, this looks like this is the laptop you're looking for. Uh, can I ring that up for you, or do we need to get some uh, accessories for that? Shana. Shana. I can't think of anything. Okay, um, Tyler. All right, Sam. So with this U-Haul we have renting, I can offer you an extra liability coverage that would cover you, yourself, anything you put into it for an extra 15 bucks. You want to go ahead and add that on? Ethan. I've got 10,000 units left, uh, but I'm running low on inventory and I have a lot of orders. Did you want to get in and make a purchase before I run out? <laughs> Leslie. Thank you for walking through with me today. See, the good thing about a gym membership is that the longer you work out, the more your growth hormone secretes, which prevents you from aging as fast. How about we sit down in here and get you set up? Emily. I know we've looked at several different types of sweaters, but I feel like this polyester blend with cotton or pure cotton blend is gonna be the best for you. Lester. Hey, Sam, how are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Good, uh, I know we're on a WebEx. Uh, do you WebEx often? Yeah. Good, uh, it looks like uh, your room is plenty lit, but we have other lights uh, that allow even more effect that uh, sometimes when you get close to the screen, it'll darken your screen. And when you go away, it lightens up. Uh, we've seen that when it's brighter, more often uh, people uh, have a better experience in WebExes. Uh, I was wondering, would you like to see some of our products that will brighten and give you a better WebEx experience? Sherry. Sure. <laughs> Sherry's like, I'm not about this. Did you say Sherry? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, it's great you came in today. We're having a sale. Oh my gosh. That blouse, that blue just completely makes your eyes pop. I think that would be perfect for you. Tracy. Oh, mine has been taken, so I keep trying to change my thoughts. But That's okay. Thinking, you can repeat one. That's fine. Whatever you feel you, comfortable uh, with. Well, this is similar to a couple others, but when you, um, you're in buying your iPhone today, we're having a special for the month of November that for $99, you also get a tablet. And I did fall for that one. <laughs> Clevin, are you there or are you still in the care facility? Clevin, I'm going to say he's in the care facility. No problem. Selgy, take us home. Sam, we want to go ahead and lock, e lock in these low interest rates on this house because um, let me tell you, they're probably going to go back up. So I say we put in this offer now, get you your mortgage at this percentage, which is a steal. Absolutely. We can always refinance later, but let's go ahead and just make an offer. And I have a really good feeling that you're going to be able to get this house at this great uh, interest rate. All right. Thank you, everybody. So all of us tried to sell, right? I think it's all fair. We all asked. So that's half the battle in sales. You'd be surprised the number of people that never asked to close in any shape or form. They just never get around to it. It's ridiculous. Not in this class, obviously, but in my experience throughout all the years leading sales teams, people don't ask. They hem, they hedge because they don't want to be told no. You were going to be told no, right? We talked to Ryan. And what did Ryan tell us? OJ, were you there for the Ryan discussion? Do you remember what he said about uh, SW, SW, SW? Some will. I don't remember that part. Some will, some want, so what? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. Okay. That one's powerful, right? You're all going to ask the question. 
and you're going to be told no. You can't take it personal. Hey, Tyler, you got a party going on there, man. I think we should all go to your fat. <laughs> What's happening over there, Tyler? <laughs> I've got people coming over because we don't have power just oh, to work wow. from home. <laughs> Where are you? What, what city? Minneapolis. There was actually Minneapolis, like okay. a transformer that went out on like southeast side of Minneapolis. Oh, my gosh. Wonderful. Um, anyway, so a lot of people don't ask the question because they want to be told no. If you are don't like being told no, you're in the wrong job because the majority of folks are going to tell you no, right? We know the leads 60% of the time, 66% of the time, they're going to tell you no. And we know that the referrals that you actually get on Zoom are going to tell you no 50% of the time. So the majority of people are going to tell you no. Some will, some won't. So what? We just have to take that into account. Okay. So let's ask Patrick. Did I ask you to close? I can't remember. I did. Okay. So Patrick, you're going to be our uh, judge. Okay. Out of all the people that asked me to buy something, who do you feel was the best? And who? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just thinking. You're looking at everybody going, I remember who is that one person that said that? Um, the one, uh, I think it was Ethan with the, with the U-Haul. That was pretty good. The liability protection or whoever said the U-Haul one was pretty good. <clears throat> so the U-Haul one, who said that? Was that you, Ethan? No, oh, that was me. Tyler, oh, was Tyler. Nelson, the U-Haul, <laughs> right? Liability protection. So why would I need liability protection? Well, in that situation, if you have it, you'd be held responsible for the truck, all the damage to your belongings, and any medical bills that you would incur if you were in an accident. Yeah, but you didn't tell me that when you tried to close me, right? Mm -hmm. So the best way to close anybody is to solve a problem. Always. You're solving something. You have to tell me what it is you're going to solve, though, if you don't know. If I walk into the store, who, who talked about honey? Was that you, Sandra? You talked about honey, right? So I walked in the store and you have this deal on honey. I think a yes. couple others said we have this deal on whatever, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with saying that because I'm probably in the store for a reason, but you're not solving something, right? In our job, sorry, in our business, we're solving a problem. We spent the entire presentation creating the problem. We're trying to figure out, you know, who are you want to take care of in the event of your death? Is your um, funeral final expenses already budgeted for? Are you leaving anything for your kids? What about your house? What about your kids' education? We're, we're creating all these problems. So we need to solve them in the close. Okay? Uh, did I talk about I recommend? Because you said I recommend so that you can. Did I talk about that with you guys? I did or did not? I don't think so. Okay, so let me do that. And if I did already, I apologize. So the uh, consultative sales is the best because you come across as an expert and you're consulting with whoever you're speaking with, right? So if I'm selling Patrick coverage for him and his family, I've gone through the entire thing, including the needs analysis. When I get to the close, I'm going to say things like, hey, Patrick, based on what you told me in terms of we want to make sure that the house is still there for the kids in the event of your death, you want to make sure that there's um, a money set aside for the kid's education. All I'm doing is repeating what I then unearthed from him throughout the entire presentation. Because you said, blah, 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 all that, I recommend this so that you can. So basically, I'm taking the problems that I unearthed that he demonstrated. I'm recommending that he do A, B, and C to provide a solution for those problems. Now, did I actually ask him to buy something? In a sense, I did, but I didn't say, hey, which one are you going to take today? Now, some of you did an assumptive close, which I thought was really good, right? I think OJ did the best one in terms of assumptive closing. Hey, you're doing this already. Why don't we get this locked up for you? Or which one do you want? Or would you say, do you need any accessories, right? So you yeah, did said this is pretty much the one you want. Like, do you need accessories? Let's go ring it up right now. Yeah. So you went with the assumptive close, which is really, really good, right? Assumptive close is very powerful. Um, and if you could combine that with providing a recommendation to solve the problem, 
that's even more powerful because then the rebuttals become a little bit easier. So uh, David, if I said, hey, David, based on what you told me for both you and your wife and the fact that you don't have any coverage whatsoever now, I recommend we go with the silver plan so that this way, if anything happens to you or your wife, your son and daughter are going to be taken care of completely. Does that sound like a good idea? So what I've done now is I put it on to David to not think about the money aspect. I'm putting it on to him to think about the solution. Now, here's why that's so powerful is because if I can get somebody, if, if David can say, yeah, the solution makes sense, now it's just a question of what's the cost amount. That's why we say, you know, do you want to go with the recommended program or do you want to do what some veterans do and try to obtain a little bit more? Let's see if you can qualify. Same concept. I just use a little bit of different words. So I got a little more years behind me in terms of selling. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's ask ba, 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 Sherry Brecken. Does that make sense to you? It actually does. Yes. All right. So I know you're having a tough time. Uh, speaking and breathing. So let's go to Jacob Davis. Jacob, now I want you to sell me something based on what we just talked about. Position it differently. Go. Um, Do I want fries with that? Wasn't that your example? Yeah. Would I? Did you want to upsize the fries the example I had? I don't know any way to... It doesn't like, matter. I just remember you did the fries one. Yeah. Um, I was actually going to piggyback off of someone else's if it's... That's fine. No I don't care. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Currently, we have this regional honey. It should help with any allergies that you may get due to weather changes and whatnot because it's all locally sourced. Okay. So you told me about honey that's locally sourced and potentially help me not be allergic, right? Did you actually close me? No. You just I told me what you have. Yeah. Okay. So remember, we want to actually move the process along, right? Yeah. Uh, Donaldo, now that you've got an idea how to close, tell them, give me an example of how you're going to close me. Um, on, still on the tie? I don't care. Take okay. what I just talked about and see if you can't spin it. Actually, let's do this because everyone has to think about it. It's totally fine. Let's go from a volunteer basis. Who thinks they're ready? Ethan, go. Hey, I saw uh, you got your new iPhone 14 there. I remember you telling me earlier that uh, you dropped your last one uh, the first week you had it. So I've got otter boxes on sale over here. Um, let's get you rung up for one so that doesn't happen again. So you you did well. And you said honor. I don't know what an honor box is, but oh, it's guess, like a rug. It's a rugged phone case to protect your phone. So it, right. So 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 do the same thing again, but solve my problem. Well, I thought I was solving the problem because you told me your phone had broken in the past, yeah. and I was helping you not have that problem again. But but the okay. So the problem is not after the phone is broken, getting it repaired or getting replaced. But the problem is I don't want it to break at all. Yeah, and you right. told me it had before, so I wanted to... Totally get that. So tell me that you have a solution or you have this honor box which will prevent breakage. Solve okay. the problem, okay? Yep. Lester. Uh, so I know you need internet. I, knew, I know you need cell phone service. We have an iPhone 14 that takes care of both, and I recommend uh, the bigger one I so that it'll help you see it better, the iPhone Plus 14. So would you like okay, stop. So that's that's okay, right? Nothing wrong with that. But if are you trying to sell me the bigger one versus the littler one? Is that your goal, or to sell me any phone whatsoever? I was going for the bigger one. Okay. So solve my problem is hey, it looks like I you told me you squint or you said the, the font's too small. We have a solution and it's with the Pro Max, right? So give me the problem. You got to state the problem that you're about to solve. All right. Who's next? Volunteers. OJ. Hey, OJ, by the way, did you get my feedback on your uh, video? Uh, no, I haven't gotten that email yet. But I put it in, I realized that I did it in the original one. The original yeah, email I, I sent out? It didn't go to my, rich, my old email either. Oh, it didn't go to your email address. Okay. Anyway, you did a great, great job. Just so you know, because <laughs> I ended up watching your video last night and then I went to go do the uh, feedback for Clevin and, uh, 
um, uh, Corey. And so I did yours first, and then I saw that I gave you the feedback, but I had watched your whole video. I'm like, yeah, you did really, really well. So anyway, if you didn't get it, short, sweet. Oh, yeah. I, I do appreciate that. It took like 45 takes. <laughs> <laughs> but you did really well. Okay, go ahead. So I'm right. to <clears throat> You know, so, uh, you know, we, now that we're ringing up this uh, laptop, you did mention that you're a gamer and that you like to stream your games. Uh, the camera in the laptop isn't so great. Let me show you some uh, external cameras that you're probably going to be interested in. So I, that's good, but I wouldn't say isn't so great. Don't downgrade the product that you're about to close if they don't want to spy anything else, right? Because now you're leaving me thinking that this camera sucks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'd love to think about that wording better. But yeah, not, you just change it a little bit to yeah. show that, hey, based on the fact that you told me you're a gamer and you need very good graphics, a lot of people feel felt found. A lot of people feel the same way you did, and they felt, or a lot of people felt the same way that you feel. However, they solved the problem by getting this upgrade or getting this alternative camera or whatever you want to say. So you're not beating up on what you already have in place. All right, who's next? We're going to get this right, everybody. We are going to get this right. Leslie. So I hear you said that you've never worked out before, never been in a gym setting before. With your membership, we also offer a Smart Start program where we take you through machines one through eight, where we will take your weight, we will do your measurements, set you up with a weight and rep program, and also a Remeasure you and reweigh you after so many weeks of working out. So, with the program I'm currently going to buy from you, or well, upgraded? Well, with the one you're you're buying from me, where you've already said you're interested, with this program that you're buying, we oh, also so you're doing solidification. You already did the clothes, then I'm going to buy something. You're just solidifying it, right? Well, I'm trying to get you to purchase the Smart Start program. <laughs> you just told me it comes with my program. So Based me, on what you just said, let me it. Wait, hold on. Let me see if I'm crazy. Tyler Nelson, based on what she just said, did, did you think I was going to have to spend any more money or was I already locked into something? I kind of got that you were already locked into something. Yeah. Okay. See? All right. So we'll come back to you, Leslie. That was a good okay. shot. Who's next? All right. Corey, are you sure you can talk? I can talk, but I don't know if you can understand. <laughs> All right, give it a shot. There's a, I'm going to give you a little preview. There's a bread store that, that's really expensive, but once you taste the bread, you have to buy. So I see you're a customer right now. You walked in. So I see you looking over the menu. Um, what um, May I ask, is it the price that is uh, making you question your buy today? Uh, no, I just don't know if I, I don't know if I want to buy anything else. <laughs> well, we have, if you have a few flavors, on, um, you can test taste today, and then you can see how good uh, the bread is. And w once you test taste, I'm sure you'll you'll want to pick something. Okay, that's that's great, Corey. If I'm in a bread store and you're going to give me free samples, but I, we need <laughs> to think about we're on Zoom and we're not giving away anything for free, that's right? True. So we've got to show value. We got to solve a problem, right? Hey, if you're still hungry, you know, perhaps I can get you this other stuff to take with you when you leave. So you can share this creamy goodness with whomever, right? David Fulfer, go. So Sam, I don't want, to, want you to miss out on what we've got. If, if the last couple of years has taught us anything that when the supply is there, you've got you've to load up or else you're going to miss out on and have to, have to wait. So you want to go ahead and um, buy two pallets today and, or do you want to wait for the next shipment in six months? <laughs> Okay, that's that's good, All right? It's given me a problem to, for me to think about that. Hey, I can't wait six months, right? The fear uh, of missing uh, out. Fear of missing out, FOMO. Okay, who's who's next? Somebody wants to volunteer, right? Tracy Hall and then Patrick. Tracy, go. So what, what I'm hearing is that the fact that you're using an Acer Chromebook is causing you a lot of problems with Zoom and different other programs that only use Windows or Mac. Is that correct? And well, you can correct that. Um, do you know Linux? Oh, you don't? Okay, well, then what I would recommend is purchasing one of these laptops here that has Windows 10 on it. Um, you can get the, this version, but since you're going to be doing Zoom and other things related to video, I would recommend you get um, this one over here uh, because it has better quality video and audio. Okay. 
Yeah. So you gave me your recommendation. So because you said I recommend so that you can get on Zoom and all that other stuff. All right, Patrick. Or yeah, yeah. Patrick. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I, I see that you just bought the newest iPhone. And uh, I know that you recently told me that you drop your phone a lot and you need you need some kind of case that will prevent you from breaking your phone and having to buy a new one. Now we have these otter boxes that just came in. The, these will guarantee not your phone will definitely not break with these on. There's even a there's even a warranty in case that, that this case breaks, you'll get you'll get a free replacement of one. But yeah, these are the best in the market. And I definitely recommend that you would buy this one. <laughs> the best on the market. That's what they all say. Hey, Patrick, I see you've got the iPhone 14. Are you having the same problems I have as when I drop it, the face gets shattered? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, want, you know what? I found that there's a way to avoid all of that. Is that something that would interest you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm putting the problem. He's telling me what the problem is. Now I give him the recommendation. I recommend you get the otter. I use it. I don't, and all those problems went away. And I dropped my phone 20 times. Now, my own recommendation, if I'm in this store and I'm selling them that, because you said I recommend so that you can, is much more powerful. And I've mm -hmm. condensed it down, right? Some of us are using a lot of words. You don't have to do that. You can condense it down. All right, who's now? Emily, you have not volunteered, Emily, and I know you can do this. Go. <laughs> Sorry, everybody's saying they feel like crap. I'm not doing the best either. So I'm trying to kind of what is up with everybody I'm so sorry <laughs> hopefully right. everyone feels better go so I know that you you think that the cotton sweater is the best that is a great option fantastic however do you like to put your clothes in the dryer do I like to put my clothes yeah I put would, all my do you clothes put everything the in the dryer yeah okay I would suggest going with the polyester blend because if you put your cotton sweater in the dryer, it's going to shrink and you will never be able to wear it again. Right. So I want you to do feel felt found on that. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. I understand the way that you are feeling in regards to the cotton sweater because it is softer. However, we have, and I. A lot of my customers have felt the same way that, yes. but what they found is when you put this particular garment in the dryer it melts or it shrinks or whatever you want to say it tends to shrink right so to avoid that we have i would the, suggest the polyester blend i would recommend right so that was good using feel felt found dominic come on brother mm. nine million phone calls in two months Um, I know you said you get headaches um, from staring at the screen uh, from all day. I know you said you're an office worker. I have these new brand new uh, blue lenses that prevents that. Uh, I use them myself. Actually, I stare at a screen all day um, and I, I get no headaches from them. Um, so if you're interested, we could, uh, we could get, definitely get that for you. So that was good, Dominic. One of the things you guys should do is don't use yourself as the example because that sounds like sometimes we're pushing. Just say other clients or other customers, right, have found that when they use these, they don't have headaches anymore. I get told that all the time. They come in thanking me. Do that. That carries a lot more weight. Oh, you've sold this to a lot of people. Okay. Selji. Sam, I see you're buying this great uh, face cleanser. I know you said you suffer from oily skin. Um, did you know that the reason your face produces so much oil is actually because it's being stripped of its natural oils? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. So I think a great um, thing that would go with your cleanser would be this moisturizer. This is going to help replenish the natural oils in your face so that you don't overproduce and then end up with this oily problem all over again. So this would be great, a great addition with your cleanser. Let's go ahead and just add that for you and um, you'll be on your way to perfect and clear skin. Mm -hmm. So solving the problem, right? You put it in front of me. A lot of people don't know that this happened. Boom, boom, and this is what will solve it. Okay, so now let's take it into the insurance mode. Do the same thing for me, Solji, but tell me on um, the A71, go. Um, 
the A7 one. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, Sam. So this is actually great coverage for you because we're not so much worried about your health insurance. We know that you probably have great health insurance. What we are worried about is the wages and the time that you're going to be losing every time um, you end up in the hospital. So we have allotted these $300 for you just to go in and get it checked out. Now, if you do have to stay over the, um, overnight at the hospital, you get this amount every single day for up to a year. That completely takes care of all of the lost wages and of your time. Um, yeah, okay, you got it. So the A71, she stated the problem and then she gave us a solution, right? Leslie Lombardo, go. Not ready yet, I'm so sorry. My, my SA has been messaging me about a contract saying that I need to get that done ASAP and I have, I'm, I'm not sure what he's talking about, I'm so sorry. So a contract is where you sign it once you have your license saying, hey, I am a, a captured agent of American Income Life. All of us had to sign a contract. Oh, okay. So all you need to tell your SA is send it to me, email okay. it. And then uh, you got to sign it and send it back. Okay. No big Sorry, deal. I'm unprepared. Come back to me. No, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Sandra Yonts, we're talking about insurance. You're going to be I'm the best waiting. closer out of this class. Close me on the A7 one. So I just want to clarify. You're on like page six of our of our script. That's what we're looking at when you a when you say A7. Yes. Okay. No, when I said A7-1, I'm not on any script. I'm, I apologize. I'm just asking you to close me on uh, the A7-1 product. It's just in your mind. You, there's no script here. I just want you to think about the value, set the proposition, state the problem, and give me the solution. Okay. Um, well, do you have any questions with us? regarding this so far. As you can see, there are some really great benefits for you and your family to have. And I do understand your concern about the price, but we are talking about protecting our family here. And I do understand how you feel. Many other customers have felt the same way. However, they do see the benefit of just $3 a day to have this peace of mind. How does that sound to you? Uh, Ethan, did she do it right? Well, Probably not. Sandra, I think, so the A71 piece is, is the hospital part of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the Oh, well, recovery. okay. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. That's okay. Yeah, Sam was trying to confuse us. And he got me too for a second. <laughs> you want to try again? <laughs> of the hospital part sure uh -huh. go okay so as we're reviewing these coverages for you do you see the benefits in regards to what you get just if you walk into the hospital They're, we're going to pay you $50 a day just for being in there and if something catastrophic does happen and if you do end up in ICU you'll be covered for 10 full days at $200 a day. Do you see how that can offer your customer peace of mind? Or I'm sorry, your family peace of mind? David Fulford, did she do that right? Not exactly. Do it better. I'll try. So, um, so what we're, we're we're recommending for you is a plan, uh, part of a plan that is going to also include uh, care for you um, if something happens. So if you're having to go into the hospital or the ER, either you, Mary, or the children will all receive $150 per day, um, or if the or if it's longer, up to 365 days, a $300 daily hospital benefit. Or for ICU, a $600 day um, hospital benefit for up to 14 days. So right, as you so can you're see, listing, you're listing everything that the plan does, but what problem are you solving? I was getting ready to close with that. 
Right, but, but you, you've already done, so when I ask you guys to close, you've done the presentation. You've already talked about the plans, right? If somebody says, well, I'm not sure about the 871, that's what I'm asking you to do is then close on that 871. You don't have to recite the plan again because you've already done that. Solve the problem. Okay. What is the problem that the 871 solves? If I have to go to the emergency room, my time is being wasted, not wasted, but my time is being spent usually six to eight hours, if not more, sitting around doing nothing. Wouldn't it be nice to get compensated right. for that? That's what I mean, right. solve that problem. So not only are we offering a good, a great burial benefit, but we're also recommending a plan that will take care of uh, your day-to-day -day expenses for loss of work or um, having to suffer through the problem of going to the hospital. So that's why we've included those coverages as well. Right, so that's good. Do we never want to talk about breaking the plan apart or if we, you know, the whole thing is one recommendation from the VSOs, right? It's not even from us, it's from the VSOs. Now right. you can say, hey, I've been talking to a lot of veterans over the last couple of months or whatever it is that you want to say. And what a lot of them, have found is that by getting this, it alleviates the pain of their uh, time being spent doing this, that, or the other. All right, Sherry Brecken, how are we doing? You okay? You okay to give this a shot? I'm, I'm kind of lost. I think it's because I missed Friday and Monday. Okay, no worries. We'll come back to you. Tatiana, are you there? Tatiana Minter. No, I am, but barely, yes. <laughs> are you ill too no well no 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 there's just like construction man all over the place and they're asking me questions but yes i'm here i'm listening okay gotcha are you able to give us an example of closing um maybe when yeah sure when am i closing i can try <laughs> okay uh jacob davis give her an example of what to close and see if she can close you still just thinking about the um, plan that you were talking about. So Tatiana, he's telling you that uh, he's still thinking over the plan. He hasn't ready to close on it yet. So what do you do? Can I just make this about anything or are we talking insurance? Yeah, we're talking about insurance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are, are we all waiting for me? What, what are we doing? I don't know. He's asking, he's telling, he's role-playing. He told you he's not ready to buy. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So usually yeah. when members don't take advantage of their benefits in their enrollment period, it's, it's very rare. And it's one of, it's because of three reasons. Either they didn't understand something. Did you understand everything, Jacob? Did I go too fast? No, I think I understood it. Okay, okay. Or they don't think they need all of it. Now, does this look like too much coverage for your family? Yeah, I think it's I think it's just a little too much. Okay, okay. And again, like, is it an affordability issue or too much coverage or is it both? I just, I don't think that I need all of that accidental and stuff. It seems like too much. Oh, the accidental. So here is the thing. Those hospital benefits, we're not really concerned about your... um hospital benefits too much because generally the VA gives y'all pretty good health insurance. Uh, I like to call this just the icing on the cake here. So what we're concerned about is your lost income and other things that add up when you have to go to the hospital. So just for me to run back through this for you so I can just, you know, show you how much value you'll be getting here. Um, if you were to go to the emergency room, we'll give you $100. That's just for you driving there. Um, that can You can use that for gas. You can use that for whatever you want to. You can go get a steak with it. That's none of my concern. We're just going to give it to you. Um, if you were to stay in the hospital for any reason at all, it does not matter. We'll end up giving you $200. That's for 365 days. We do that for the entire year per person per injury. And if it was anything any more serious, like the intensive care unit, generally it's life or death there. We'll end up giving you $400 for two weeks. Generally, no one stays in the intensive care for more than two weeks. If you do, then we'll drop you back down to that 200 so you'll still be getting paid. But the only thing I would like to go ahead and get you closed today, um, Mr. Jacob, because I don't want you to think of it 
as money, think of it like you're closing your health and your age. You're closing on your health and your age. The older you get, um, the more rated you'll get, which means you'll either lose coverage and your premium will go up, or we can get you locked in for a premium and you'll lose, um, you'll lose a lot of that coverage there as well. So the older you get, we never get healthier, the older we All right, get. All right, Tatiana, that was good. So we don't want to use the word closing. We want to use the word enrolling. Right. Right, because our closing is a sales word, and anybody who has any experience will know that we're trying to close it. So enrolling, once you get enrolled. Yeah, so she pointed that. out something that I haven't talked about yet, is that you're never going to be more healthy than you are today. Right? <clears throat> Nothing's going to change <clears throat> except your age and then potentially your health, right, from today. So this is the best time to get something done because there's a chance that you aren't going to either be able to qualify or if you qualify, it's going to be more expensive, All right? All right, so if we look at the end of the script or the presentation script after we uh, ask which one we want to go, you've got down closing and power phrases and rebuttals, okay? Eddie's going to go into this with us a lot, <clears throat> but let's talk about if they want to think about it, okay? So, Selji, I want to think about it. I'm not ready yet. Sam, while you're thinking about which option makes the most sense for you and your family, I'm just going to go ahead and ask the medical questions just to see if you can even qualify. Is that fair? So what does that do to a client when you do that? What are you actually doing? It makes them feel like you're taking away this great opportunity because they might not even qualify. So then yep. they're going to be like, oh, well, now I want to see if I qualify. Perfect, right? Giving it and taking away. Incredibly powerful. Hey, you know, Selji, I can't afford three hundred four dollars a month. I, I I just can't. That can't happen. That's way too much. You told me that, Sam. Um, I appreciate you being honest and open with me. That is why I'm here. Um, we don't want you to have this plan cause any financial hardship for you or your family, uh, but we also don't want not having it to cause a financial disaster for you and your family. So I'll make some adjustments here to ensure that neither one of those things occur, okay? Let's see what we can come up with. So that has a lot of power in saying that because you're there to help. You're not there to sell, right? You're like, hey, whatever's going to work for you, financial hardship versus financial liability or what do they call it, financial disaster. I like hardship and liability, but disaster is perfectly fine. So, you know, which one is it for you? Then the next thing is what? The script will want you to present probably the bronze, That, but I would like to find out what their budget is. Oh, I'm thinking I can only do $50 a month. What if, Tyler, I told you I can only do $50 a month? What do you say to that? All right. Well, we don't want to cause any financial hardships for you. So let's go ahead and tailor your plan to what you can actually afford. Right. So now uh, you just sold a $600 plan, theoretically, right? Is that good or bad? I'm sorry. You cut out there. What was that? <laughs> you sold a $600 plan at $50 a month, right? Is that good or bad? Are you at goal or are you below goal? below a little bit right so we don't want to just pivot right down to what the client says at 50 dollars, particularly if we show them 300 right yep. so if we always start at five dollars a day five dollars is always going to be 304.17 correct yep. okay so if we go right to 50 dollars, that hurts us so if somebody says that's all they can afford then i would pivot to the bronze because you already have that up and ready to go does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Uh, what if I still want to think about it? Hey, Ty, I hear what you're saying. Can you just give me more time? I mean, I don't have to do this today, do I? Um, that's when you'd usually say, now usually members don't take advantage of their benefits in their enrollment period. It is very rare. It is one of our three reasons either they just don't understand something they don't like or they don't think they need all of it or they it is affordability issue is that where we yeah, it? which one is it for you exactly so then it can tell you where they want to go because when people say they need more time they don't really need more time 
unless they're considering another solution, which means they see value in what you're doing. Now it's just a pricing objection. And if it's pricing, you know how to address that, right? It's like when you go on a new car lot, you want to buy a car. You may not be there to buy a car. Most of the purchase of a car actually is an impulse buy. But that means that you're in the market, you're probably going to buy a car. So the good salesperson has got to figure out how to bring you in and have you sit down for three hours to buy a new car. It's ridiculous. All right. Uh, Shana, I really can't afford it. I'm glad you told me that. That's why I'm here. They don't, sorry, they don't want this plan to be the cause of financial hardship for your family and they don't want not having it to cause a financial disaster. So let's make some adjustments to ensure neither one of those things occur. Is that fair? So that's an assumptive one, right? I'm assuming you're going to buy something. You're just telling me the price is too much, right? What if I just told you, Sandra, you know, I'm not interested. What do you do then? So I just want to confirm that um, you don't want to speak to any representatives regarding these benefits that um, are provided for you by the veteran service organizations. Hmm. Patrick, is that good? Um, well, that, that's part of the phone script thing when you're on the phone with them and we're kind of, we're trying to down close right now. So I, I don't know if that's what you would say at that time. Right. So, uh, Sandra, that was really good if you're trying to set an appointment, <laughs> right? So that was good. No, no doubt. But if you're trying to close somebody, you've gone through an hour of presentation and you've shown them this, you've got to determine whether or not, why are they not interested? So down closing, right? There are three important questions. One is the program, something you're guaranteed to use. Two is your family better off with or without it. And then lastly, is the money affordable or is taking food off the table? So if it is, I, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm going to fix this for you. See, when somebody just says I'm not interested, we need to know why. Now, sometimes when people say I have plenty of coverage elsewhere, okay, you're not going to win that one. Remember, some win, some will, some won't, so what? But when somebody just says I'm not interested, you need to have a reason why. If nothing else, uh, when you pivot to the report that you're going to send to the VSOs, they may put a comment in there about why they don't want this. Doesn't need this, doesn't have it. He's extraordinarily rich, just happened to be a veteran, completely covered. I don't need anything. So we want to pitch or uh, pivot to the down close. Does that make sense? All right. OJ, do you want to know what most veterans do in your situation? Um, wait, am I role playing now? Yeah, you're going to go do that one for me. No, wait, am I playing the veteran? Like, are you asking me like I'm the veteran? No, you're the agent. I'm sorry. I was just giving you the title of where I wanted you to, <laughs> to work on. In the last page or the second to last page of the presentation script in red, it says, do you want to know what most veterans do in your situation? I want you to walk through that one for me. Oh, wait, I haven't read over this yet. Okay, no worries. So if, if the answer is yes to that, if you ask that question, okay, we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves. I'm not even sure if you qualify for the program yet. So let me ask you the medical questions now to see if you qualify for that. And if oh, yeah, do, I've seen them do this in the presentations. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're moving to basically yeah, giving it uh, away. Yeah, okay. let's, see, let's see if you even qualify. You know, and then we can have that set up. Something I see Ashley do a lot too is like, like kind of like what you were saying is like, um, no, my favorite line that she uses is she says, uh, keep in mind, you're not buying insurance with money. You're buying it with your age and your health. It's the way she always positions it. So it's kind of like where you were saying, you're not going to be any healthier than you are today. Exactly. So she, like you and may qualify today. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you may qualify today, but... Tomorrow, something could happen. All right, so let's ask Patrick. If I say, okay, we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves, I'm not sure if we can qualify. Now, some of these questions are a little silly, but I'm required to ask you, so bear with me. Where am I doing that at? What tool um, am I in? Where am I at doing that? 
So whenever whenever you're gonna pull up or whenever you're at that part in the presentation, you uh, you're an HP pro and you pull up the uh, I, I think the the medical questions, yep. the medical questions that you ask just to see if they qualify. And those are the list of medical questions as opposed mm -hmm. to just the four questions in the needs analysis, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we need to get those answers. And when you ask those questions, you should be aware of what the answers are. Because if there's a yes to any of them, there may be an auto decline and they wouldn't qualify. Or maybe they're taking um, metformin because they have prediabetes, right? So Tyler Nelson, if I told you during that process, I said, hey, I want to think about it. Hey, let me see if you qualify. And then you asked me the medical questions and I said, well, I'm taking metformin for my diabetes. What would you say to that? Well, I would ask him how much and how often. Well, you well, don't need that yet. You're going to get that later when you go into EAP. But right there, in terms of closing, what does that trigger in your mind how to close this deal if I told you I was on metformin? Well, then we should probably get you signed up today. Exactly. Hey, I'm glad that you told me that. Uh, I have a lot of folks who take metformin and yet we can still get them enrolled in the program. If nothing else, let's get you started so that you have something because we don't know what might happen to your health moving forward. Right? So you use their condition in that case. Now, if it's a really extreme condition, then obviously they may not qualify and you have to go down that route. Okay. All right, so who thinks they're ready for, actually, I'm just gonna pick Emily Johnson. Emily, we're gonna give you a minute because I want you to go into HB Pro. I want you to build three programs for me. I'm 55 years old, I'm a non-smoker and I don't take any medications whatsoever. I have no medical conditions. You're going to move to the benefits summary and you're gonna to try to close me on something. Let me know when you're ready by raising your hand and we'll let Lester ask his question. Go ahead, Lester. Uh, going back to the medical question. So if they have cancer in the middle of cancer, um, do we just say you're not going to qualify? Do, do we submit it anyway and then see if they qualify? <clears throat> well, that's going to depend on what they have, how long ago they had it, and what was done to resolve it. If they had it over 10 years ago, you can submit that. Uh, you may have to submit it as a trial. And when you go into your flash sheet in HP Pro, it'll give you instructions on what you need to do based on the type of cancer. Like skin cancer is different. Internal cancer, yeah, you're going to have to be careful with that. If they're over the age of 60 or under the age of 60, different ways that you handle that. Uh, to me, that's the art because more often than not, you're not going to have that issue. But obviously with the core herd of people we're selling to, there's going to be percentage that do let your uh, upline give you instructions about how to handle that because they may tell you, oh, can't qualify whatsoever. Oh, they can qualify. And we'll discover some of that as we do the EF training in, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Okay. That was a good question. Hey, Sam. Yes. Are you married? Yes. I'm married and I have one kid under the age of 18. All right, Ethan Opelt. Am I saying that right? Opelt? Yeah, you got it right the second time. <laughs> Opelt. I forgot the L. I said Opelt. Okay. Um, what is the most difficult part of the close for you in your mind? Um... I think if I just get a hard no, like, um, I'm not interested, I'm not spending money today. Uh, I think that's a tough one to come back from for me based on my experience, which is zero right now. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to have people that do that, right? And it, it, you're going to try. All we're asking you is to try and then pivot to the appropriate rebuttal based on that. So, uh, OJ, you watched Ashley a number of times, right? Did Ashley ever get a firm no from anybody while you were watching? Uh, no, she didn't. Like, she, <laughs> uh, it was always, uh, you know, I need to think about it. Well, right now isn't the right time. It was never like an actual no. When she did like that final survey, 
you know, where they do the star ratings or whatever, like they actually admitted, like it's a good program and like what's being offered is a value to them. Okay. Did it, so that's, well, Ashley's really good. So she demonstrates a lot of value. Anybody that's watched a presentation, have any of you seen a hard no? I'm not interested. Okay. Patrick has and Selji. Let's go with Patrick first. Patrick, when that happened, what did the agent do? Well, I, I mean, it kind of went back and forth for a while. This was Ty that was doing it. But the, the guy really just, he just didn't want to spend any money. And then Ty was doing a good job explaining everything. And it, it was just hard nose over and over. And then he just kind of gave up after a bit. Right. Because you could only bend your head. Like, there was no turning him. Okay. But you saw Ty multiply try to overcome the objection with a rebuttal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Like asking so, why it's a no. Perfect. Selji, what about you? What did the agent do? Uh, the client was saying they were already over insured, um, but they only had term insurance. And so she said that she did not need to spend more money because then she would be at spending about $500 total of insurance. Um, so Shayla went on to make a comprehensive plan tailored to her. I think she had it down to like $89 a month. And the lady was still saying that she didn't need it. She wasn't going to need it. She already had great insurance and that was that i don't think it moved anywhere after that okay. but she shayla did attempt to overcome the objection more than once right yes absolutely yes right so the whole point here is that we don't give up on the first time right hey i'm not interested i don't want to can't afford it we attempt to provide what they call a rebuttal in order to overcome the objection but we don't want to come across pushy and we don't want to upset people right we try to demonstrate the value have them see the value and then go from there. Emily Johnson, are you ready? Almost. Almost. So well, I'll take almost. If the client is already leaning towards agreeing to the purchase, do we even need to fill out the medical questions through HP Pro? Or can we just skip that as the questionnaire is comprehensive and yeah? Uh, so Tyler, if I know they're going to buy and I already have the pricing set, yeah, I'm done with HP Pro except for the report card and then closing out the engagement. I want to move to EAP because one of the things you'll find is that it takes a period. How long did it take a majority of you to do your A1 through A5? Between 15 and 20 minutes. And we haven't even gone through and shown the plan yet. So you're going to at least double that. So for all of us starting out, you're going to spend an hour getting through HP Pro. The moment somebody wants to buy a certain price point, you want to get to EAP because that's going to take another amount of time. So remember I said that in this entire process for this course, my job is to teach um, what? Effectiveness and efficacy. It's not to teach efficiency. Efficiency comes with repetition. You'll get more and more efficient at it. So uh, who saw Ashley close the deal? OJ, right? OJ, on average, how long would you say it takes Ashley to close the deal that you saw? Um, I haven't actually seen her close one yet. Okay. Has anybody I seen a close seen, deal? I've seen her get like really close because there was one where she got like <laughs> all the way to the finish line. It was like about like 45 minutes, but then he like went, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up. Wait, I didn't know it was going to be that much. And then it was like there another 15 minutes. Have so, you observed anybody else with a sale? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Has anybody, who's observed a sale? Ethan, how long did it take for that sale? Uh, truthfully, it was almost an hour and a half it was at least 80 minutes okay top, Ethan, top to bottom Emily, how about you sorry how long did you take for that sale you observed take place i would say probably about an hour and a half mm -hmm. almost two hours leslie it was actually with eddie and i would say closer to like an hour and 15 yeah so that is really good he's gonna he's a closer and he knows how to move officially so my whole point here is Anywhere you can find a way to save time and basically reduce the total face time with a client that's buying, the better, right? So if somebody at some point tells me, yes, I'm a 304, 17 is going to work out great for me based on what you showed me. Hey, no problem. I'm going to start with this other application over here so we can fill that out together. And I'm going to show you everything on the screen. And then we're going to do the report card at the end. Or let's do the report card now. Let's get that done and dusted and then come over here and, and uh, fill out the application. So yeah, if I can avoid asking medical questions in HP Pro, I will. But if I can't, I'll ask the questions in HP Pro. And then when they want to buy, I don't ask them the questions again in 
the application. But I do do this. I say, hey, by the way, you're going to sign all of this. There's multiple places that you sign. And everything that I'm going to enter into the page two, which is the medical questions, are the ones that you already answered. Because remember what's happening in an application. You're signing your name to the best of your knowledge and belief. The answers are true. And so is the client. Does that make sense? So you don't have to replicate, but you got to let them know that, hey, you're signing this application indicating it's all truthful. Okay. Emily. I'm ready. Are you ready? All right, go ahead and share your screen and everybody should be paying attention because we're gonna see if Emily can close me. Let's see. All right, can y'all see my screen? Yes. Perfect. I've got to move y'all around. Give me a second. Okay, Sam. Shoot, my screen's not wanting to participate. Hang on a second. There we go. Mm -hmm. Emily, All what right. are we doing? I was getting back to where I needed to be on my script. Oh, okay. All right, so do you want me to start from here? No. Where do you want me to start from? I want you to start from the benefits summary because you're going to close me. That's right. There you go. All right, go. They just need to know, did you want to be like most other veterans and go with the recommended plan? That's the plan that I showed you setting aside $5 a day or $304 a month. Some veterans get super excited and they ask to set aside more. That's going to be the enhanced program right here. That is going to be contributing $16 a day for both of you or $8 a day per person. And that would be $486 per month. You can see you get a lot more coverage for a little bit more contribution. Sam, do you like, do you want to do like most other veterans and go with the recommended program or do you want to try qualifying for the enhanced program? You know, uh, I didn't know it was going to be so expensive. Aren't all of this? I thought it was for free. That's why I submitted my uh, return card. I completely understand. Now, I'm glad that you told Well, you said that it was so expensive. Mm -hmm. That's not on the rebuttals. <laughs> it's not on my rebuttals. Adapt and overcome. Okay. Now... I completely understand. I mean, that is a lot of money for the average person. I'm glad that you let me know. However, I do have the bronze program. It is quite a bit less. It would come in at $4 per day and $121 per month. Is that something that you could afford? So you pivoted from 304 down to 121.68 right away, right? Yes. So go, show me the 304.17. So what should you have asked me right here? Um. So Emily, are you saying that the 30417 is gonna take the food off your table? Because if that's the case, I can't let you do that. That wouldn't be fair to you or your family. Gotcha, okay. And Emily says what? What does Emily say if I ask her if it's taking food off the table? If I'm the client? Yeah. 
I would say yes, if that would be too much money. Because it's going to take food off the table, Emily? Okay, I completely understand that. So that's exactly why I'm here, right? And then I talk about liability versus legacy or liability versus disaster, or however you guys want to use the wording. What is the very next thing I do? Do I pivot to the bronze right away? Or do I ask what makes sense? Because I, I can ask, adjust. ask them what would make more sense. Yeah, what makes sense? If 30417, because what I want to make sure, Emily, is that you're getting enough coverage for you and your family, particularly the hospital benefits. A lot of value there. You see that, right? Yeah, I see that. Okay, cool. So what makes sense from a budgetary standpoint? Now, if I tell you anything north of 121, what are you going to do, Emily? I would refreeze my screen, and then I would go back to my plan generator and adjust it accordingly. Adjust which one accordingly? Adjust the monthly payment accordingly. Which, where? Which one? Which one are you going to adjust? you got silver, gold, and bronze. Which one are you adjusting? My silver. No. You no. don't want to adjust the silver because you may be able to talk them back into the silver once they see what the differences are in the bronze. Do you see what I'm saying? I got you. Okay. There you go. So now I'm going back into the bronze. I'm making a quick adjustment. Hey, my budget is no more than 200 bucks a month. So what do you do? 200 bucks a month is going to be your budget. What do you do? Pressure situation. I'm about to buy from you. Holy mackerel. What am I going to do? I'm going to move that down. I'm going to move that over. I know it's way too expensive right now. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get to that. You're going to move that up? Oh, nice. Okay. No, no. But it's still saying no. that my monthly is 121. Why are you looking at that anymore? You know the budget is 200. So all you care about now is the 174.85, moving that to 200. Oh. You're not going to allocate. Okay. You're not going to do anything else. You want to get that number to 200. There you go. Bingo. Now present that plan. All right. Actually, you could do the benefit summary. I'm sorry. That's much more powerful. Go to benefit summary. Then you would benefit summary down at the bottom. Click on bronze. Boom. Hey, and now what do you say? How do you say this? Hey, now that I have you at the at $200 a month which you said you would be more comfortable with that would give you $100 a month or $100 per day or $100 for your emergency room treatment that would move you to $200 per day for up to 365 days okay hold, hold on hold on so you're reciting for me what the plan gives me click on the silver I, it would just be changing it so what did you do it went 150 300 600 and then the bronze so it reduced it a little bit, right? right? So go back to the silver. The whole life was 28 and 31. So I am now, when I go to the silver and say, hey, I was able, because you want to give yourself credibility, I was able to go in and make the change. I got you at 200 and a few cents up. Go ahead and click on it. Now, even though they didn't give you the 30,000 for each one of you in a whole life, it still gives you the 20,000 for each one of you, regardless of any cause of death. And instead of dropping your accident insurance completely off, I was still able to keep that on for you, as well as the hospital benefits at this level. You see what okay. you're doing? You're now portraying that you're doing them a solid. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So now 299. Hey, you know what, Emily? I need to think about that. I, I get it. Now, while you are thinking about it, which option makes the most sense for your family? No, 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 no. Remember, they gave you a budget. It's at 299 so it's no longer an option they're going to pick. We know that the, the budget was 200 so we don't want to talk about options. Okay. But I, but I like where you're going initially is I want to see if you can even qualify. Right. Hey, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's just make sure you can qualify. Because even though I was able to get this for you, I still have to make sure you can meet the requirements from a health and habits perspective. Okay? Okay. Everybody tracking with me on how we're doing this. Because everybody's going to have to do this with me. Okay? And you're going to have to show this to me just like this. Everybody tracking so far? 
Okay, Leslie, Lester, and Tracy. You guys are the next three up. You need to build your plans. First one's done, it's gonna do this with me, okay? Build your plans. And since I won't remember who I asked, you have to remember yourself, okay? Sandra Yellant, you're the one that has the least sales experience. Do you see what we're trying to do here when we actually go for the close? Yes, it's taking into consideration what the customer is comfortable with and mm -hmm. then building a plan around what they really want to spend a month. Mm -hmm. And OJ had a very powerful comment in the beginning, right? He said throughout this entire script, we're always assuming the sale. We're never saying, do you want this? Does this make sense? You know what I mean? Sorry, we said this make sense, but we never ask them or give them the idea that they're not going to do something. Yeah. Was, um, well, something else I would say too, is I actually like to help because I don't remember who else it was. That's like mainly customer service. Like I'm mainly customer service too. I'm not a salesperson at all. But like the thing is like when I'm in customer service or in client services, like I have been in a position where, you know, I do need to be able to upsell them. And the thing for me is that I actually, that's why I chose the laptop analogy because mm -hmm. I have to be selling, I have to believe in what I'm selling. And that's why I know like I can sell this because I believe in it. If I don't believe in it, like you can tell when I'm trying to sell it. Like I have <laughs> that's to believe fair. in it. I can step That's a good you. point. Let me ask everybody by a show of hands. How many of us have insurance, life insurance? Bum, bum. Patrick saying he's too young. Sherry Brecken, do you have life insurance? No, I don't. You do not. Do you not believe in life insurance? No, I do believe in life insurance. I didn't know about the 31 days of um, rolling over from my... Um, prior job my so, my group term oh that's right you're you were a public uh i don't know the uh i was uh, a probation officer probation thank you okay so you do believe in insurance okay gotcha so oj very powerful stuff he's got to believe in what he's going to sell otherwise he sounds like he's trying to sell it whereas before it's like hey i i'm i'm a believer i hired a guy i think six months ago prior military and he had a policy with us and I had spoken to him about a POS and then I recruited him. And he, whenever he talks to the clients, and I was like, yeah, I, I started as a policy owner. I believe in this stuff. And it carries a lot of weight when you have coverage yourself, right? Because then you can relate to the client that way. Bless you, Emily. Okay. Thank you. Of the three that I asked, who's ready to go? Can I stop showing my screen? Yes, you can. Thank you, Emily. Who is ready to go of the three that I asked? Leslie said, not me, no how, no way. Tracy, are you ready to go? No. So who was the third? Was it Ethan? Did I ask you? No, I didn't ask you or you're not ready. You didn't ask me and I'm not ready. Okay, that's fair. Who else? It's Patrick, right? Wow. I, am, I have COVID. Who did I ask? I asked three people, right? Tracy, Leslie, oh, Lester. Okay, Lester, Lester, are you ready? Not ready yet. Not ready yet. How? Okay, what's the what's taking people so long? My, I, it took me like five minutes just to get into the web page. I had it open and refreshed, and oh, Sherry's having the same problem. Can, is everybody else in HP Pro, or is everyone having a problem? I had problems this morning. First logging on. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I should give it a shot. Huh? I'm in. Can... I'm in. But I was wondering if if this was normal. Like after a few minutes, the the benefits start to disappear. The more you wait, I guess. Is that on purpose? I don't know what you're telling me. Let me share my screen. Can I share my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Show us what the issue is. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, are you saying it's grayed out? So, sorry, that... it, uh, it starts now, it's less, and then it just goes away. I, I don't know what you mean by going away. Are you saying it's getting lighter and lighter, the text? 
Okay, I see. Yeah, that's that's right. Good. And then you can't, and then it blinks out, and I have to go back in. I have to go back in and then present the plan again, and then it's like bright again. That's weird. I haven't seen that before. Has anybody else experienced that? Anybody? I think that that's looks you. like it's an issue with your browser. You probably need to clear your cache. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jay, because you made that I did that. Remember? <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but I did yeah, that I yesterday, know. and. It's Oh yeah, I don't remember if I even asked because I think it was Leslie I was I did that with. But no, because I already yeah, but then I after you said that, I was like, hey, that's a good idea. Let me try that too. Just though for my technical background, that this is like um this is actually like a program that's running in your browser. So it's not a problem on the server, it's in your browser. Mm -hmm. Okay. I also had some updates and I haven't relaunched the Chrome, so maybe that's part of the issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. now your bandwidth is low, killer. Yeah, you got issues going on with that. You have issues, issues. So while we've been chatting, I already built my plan, and I'm done and ready to go. And I'm certainly not any faster than any of you. So who is ready? Of the three people that I asked. Anybody? Sorry, Sam, my computer charger messed up. I'm working on that. I'll get it quickly. Okay, yeah, no worries. Boom, 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 boom. All right, let's do this then. Let's go to more the chat. Step out real quick. Okay. Sherry, are you still unable to get into HP Pro? Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying, but it won't even reset. <laughs> it won't even reset my login. Hmm. Okay. It happens. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, so there's the silver, right, at 152.09. There's the gold at 273, and there's the bronze, right? So here I talk I'm about, about this. Ba, 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 ba. Now what do I do? Hey, 152.09 is too much, right, Sandra? It's too much? Okay. Okay. I'm telling you it's too much. What do you want me to do? Well, as far as the silver of 152, so what would you be comfortable paying a month in your family budget? We want to make sure that we're not taking any food off your table and everything, but we also want to make sure that you have coverage for your family. Okay. Uh, Ethan, is that how you would do that? It was pretty good. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're fishing for a budget, right? Yeah, I mean, basically, that's what it is, right? Hey, 15209, okay, are you telling me, Sandra, that's going to take food off the table? I'll tell you, well, 15209. Okay, so what makes more sense for you and the family? Because that's exactly why I'm here, right? I want to make sure that we get you enrolled in something that makes sense for the family. Uh, $80 a month. I can afford $80 a month. What do I do as the agent? What do I do if I tell you $80 a month is my budget? So you'll go to the bronze and build a plan at $80 a month. Well, I would go to the bronze first, right? I don't, I want to show them the bronze, even though it's not at 80, because I want to show them the value. Okay. Because when I go to 80, I'm going to reduce the value. If I told you that I could afford a hundred dollars a month, then what would I do? If I'm right here and I say a hundred dollars a month is what I can afford. Well, then would you go in and change your numbers in the silver plan to show the $100 a month? Because you don't, yeah. at that point, if they're saying they can afford $100 a month, you don't want to show them a plan of $90 a month. Correct. Right. 
And uh, some folks uh, will say, hey, we don't want you to do anything. We want you to pivot to the bronze, which is totally fine. If you pivot to the bronze, I'm okay with that as long as you built the bronze up high enough. What I see some students do is they have silver, they have gold, and the bronze is way down here in the basement. And then they go right to the bronze. And so they've reduced their earning potential from the 152 to 70 bucks or whatever, right? As long as you build your plans and accordingly, you can pivot to the bronze. I like to get the budget if I can, and I do it in a soft way. I don't say, hey, is it all you can afford or whatever? I say, hey, what makes sense? I only ask it one time. If they give me an answer with a number, then I build the plan to that number. If they don't give me a number, then I pivot to the bronze. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I don't know if it was you or someone else that I heard in my journey, but we really shouldn't be doing anything for under $3 a day, correct? It was me, yeah. If you do it under $3 a day, the cost is going to be, I mean, the value to you is ridiculous, right? So let's say I say, <clears throat> this is the plan I have right here. And it takes me a little while, but let's go to the bronze. If I make the bronze $2 a day, just so you can see what happens, two sides of this uh, typically will be an issue, right? So let me allocate the remaining. <clears throat> I'm going to allocate me out right here. Allocate, now I'm at 87.66. I'm 55 years old, right? You are only making $549. Every close is valuable. Don't get me wrong. We want you to close every deal. But what's more important for the client is understanding that the client now is only going to get $8,000. We just told them the average cost of a funeral was what? A lot more than that, right? I mean, we don't want to sell against ourselves. That makes no sense because then you're you're gutting your own value. If ultimately they tell you, hey, this is all I can do, then you're saying, okay, let's get you started knowing at some point in the future we need to add to this because that's not going to be enough to pay for your funeral fall expenses. Does that make sense to you, David? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so we want to close, but the people who close at the highest level always show the value. Always, always, always. Okay. So. I know I asked three people to start. We have Eddie that's going to join us in a little bit. What I want to do is take a break, give you guys uh, a little bit of a break. So let's come back at uh, 11 o'clock or in 10 minutes. All right. We're all coming back. I know I asked three people <clears throat> to close us. Which one of you three is ready? I have my plan generated. I could go ahead and try. Leslie, you are a treasure. I appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead and try. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I need to move this bar out of the way so I can see everything. I'm so sorry. No, feel free. Okay. <clears throat> and you want us to start where it says press benefit summary button? Uh, well, you're in the benefit summary now. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they just need to know, did you want to be like most veterans and go with what they are recommending? That's the plan I showed you, setting aside $5 a day or just $304.19 per month. Some veterans get super busy and ask if they can set aside more. That's going to be the enhanced program, contributing just $8 a day or $486 per month. As you can see, you get a lot more coverage for a bit more contribution. Now, Sam, do you want to do like most veterans and go with the recommended program? Or did you want to qualify, try qualifying for the enhanced program? Oh, wow. So 304, uh, I didn't realize it was going to be that much money. So there are three important questions. One is, is this program something that you are guaranteed to use? Two, is your family better with this program or without it? And lastly, and most importantly, is the money affordable or is it taking food off your table? Because if it is, I'm not going to let you do that. So Sam, what is going to fit into your budget? 
Well, I mean, I can't do the 304-19. I'm glad you told me that. That's why I'm here. They don't want this plan to be the cause of financial hardship with your family, and they don't and they don't want not having it to cause financial disaster. So let's make some adjustments to ensure neither one of those things occur. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. We also offered this bronze plan at just $3 a day and $182 a month. Would that fit your budget a little better? Uh, so you're going after the budget hard right but you right. need to show the difference between the bronze and the silver if that's the way you're going to go okay so, so click on the silver okay and the silver is showing a 26 whole life 25 whole life for mary right so any right. cause of death boom they're covered now if you go to the bronze that drops down to 15 and 15 so uh, i didn't give you any additional information you just built this for me right but you would know based on the needs analysis who's making the most money, who so needs that, to cover the most. Right. Right. So that you can say, because you said I recommend so that you can. Okay. Does that make sense? That does. Okay. So I like that you didn't try to pin me on a number. You you pivoted, which is totally fine. Now you're into the bronze, and the bronze still makes you a good amount of money, right? Correct. Corey. I want you to log off and get better. Okay. Is Corey still there? There you go. Yeah, log off, Corey. Just let your upline know that you're not feeling well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I don't want anybody on here that's not, you know, that sick. If any of you are feeling that poorly, uh, this training is not worth you trying to suffer through it because you're not going to get much out of it. Does that make sense? I, I, want could, everybody yeah. to be good. I currently right. have 101 fever right now, but I'm definitely going to truck through this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Clevin, what's happening? Clevin's in the house. Good man. All right. Um, yeah, so we talked about pivoting. We talked about uh, trying to overcome the objections, right? Correct. So we're just waiting for Eddie to join us. Hopefully he will uh, be able to join us shortly. And then we'll go from there. Let me do this. Okay. So I absolutely can't afford 182.50. No problem, Sam. Um, so in this situation, actual Sam, um, would you, what would your next step be? You would go, you would tell them, no, no problem, Sam. I understand that. If it's taking food off the table, I'm not going to let the, let you do that. So is this taking food off your table? Well, you don't need to ask that again because I told you I just can't afford it, right? We've already, okay. you, you asked the question about is it taking food off the table to make sure that you understand that the budget is, is not at the level that you're showing right. or that that person's budget can't absorb this, okay? You already asked that. So, and at so this I told point, you I can't afford this. Okay, so, so Sam, what can you afford? And let's see if I can make some adjustments. <laughs> What can I afford? Okay, so you probably want to do it a little bit softer than that, right? Okay. Lester, how would you ask the question to find out what I could afford? I understand, uh, Sam, because uh, expenses are definitely something to take into consideration. Um, is there some uh, benefit, some amount that you would be more comfortable with? Okay, Ethan, how would you do it? Um, I think, you know, Lester's was pretty good. Honestly, that was what I was going through okay, in my head. Go, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Selji. Is Selji with us? Uh, she, he's got to go to the big dog. Selji. She'll no, I'm him. here. Can I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, you know, the class is giving you mad respect, Selji. All right, Selji, how That's would you nice. do if I told you 182.50 was just way too much money? Uh, well, Sam, I'm going to tell you what you can't afford. Um, no, I think I, I don't, I mean, I, I would like if they offered their budget, but usually I just say something like, okay, I understand that's fair. Let's see what we can both come up with that might be comfortable for you. Um, then I can kind of adjust the plan a little bit and maybe do like 150 and see how it sits with the client then, um, whether it's still too high and that way I know how to adjust accordingly. Am I wrong? 
No, it's not that you're wrong or that you're right. You just, you're going to get into a thing of you trying to find the number. You're going to say this number, they're going to go, no, it's too much. This number. So at some point you've got to find their basement, right? Or actually their ceiling is more appropriate. How high can they go? <clears throat> it's usually not that difficult. If someone says one two fifty, what I usually say is, okay, I, I feel you. I get that. What makes sense for your family? Okay. What makes sense for your family? And then somebody usually tells me something. Oh, you know what? I can't do it right now. Now I have a whole different line of approach, right? Someone says, I can't do it now. <clears throat> Meaning they have no money. <clears throat> but if they go, well, oh, what makes sense? I, Man, I really can't do more than 140, 125, 100, whatever the number is. How do I want you to approach that? Leslie, if I tell you I can only do 120, what do I want you to do at that point? I understand, Sam. Just give me one second and let's see if I can't make that work. Right. You are the one that's going to solve the problem. Because now the problem isn't the value. The problem is pricing, right? Correct. <clears throat> I've even said sometimes, hey, you know, normally I can't do this but as a director. I have a little more leeway. Let me see what I can do for you. What am I doing? Giving it? And taking, taking it. it. Right. And if I if all they can do is 120, I'm happy man. I'll I'll sell all day 120, right? I'm flipping hamburgers. I'm not trying to grill steaks here. So I want us all to think of that. You're not losing if you have to downsell. You're getting the close. What we want you to do is not downsell immediately into the lowest possible uh, amount, right? We want to give it our best shot. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay, okay so that was you. That was great. Who was one of my other three? Can I, before you go to the next three, can I make sure I did this right? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Actually, I want you to take control. Hey, before we go to the next group, let me let me make sure I did this right. Don't ask me. Okay. Right. <laughs> so now I regenerated the plan and I was able to come up with something in your budget. Is that what you're going to tell me? No, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm asking for advice. <laughs> oh, about how to say that. Okay. So Absolutely. I freeze my screen, right? I'm going to go in and make the modification. I'm going to say, Hey, it looks like I was able to do this for you. Okay. Let me okay. see if that makes sense. Now I'm going to tell everybody, this is, we're going to talk about the art as opposed to the science. Go ahead and click on the, on the, uh, build a plan or the plan generator for me. And I've already altered it a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, science part here. Sure. This is what I do, everybody. What I do is when I know I need to adjust down, I'm going to go ahead and increase the A71 option to the next level higher. And then I'm going to allocate. So what I would do is I would take the double family and I move it to triple family. Okay. Okay. For some reason, and my daughter, now I know I'm at 124 and I said it was at 120. What I, I'm not going to do anything up there. I'm not going to touch that. There's no need to touch that. You have a budget already, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So now let's say that Mary makes more money than John. So I would probably take John and move him down maybe 9,000. Okay. So move him to 9,000. That gets us to 118. So make him 9,500. That'll put us at 120 and some change. 9,500. Oh. Okay. Trying to give away the farm there. <laughs> 9,500, 120, 120. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the benefits summary. Right. And I'm going to say, hey, Leslie and John, this is what I was able to do for you. I was able to get you pretty close to the 120, which did bring down your freedom of choice by a bit. However, if we look at the accident, I was able to move that up. So then I would compare the bronze accident to the silver accident. Well, yeah, maybe it didn't work here because I didn't see the silver. But do you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm showing more value in the overall portfolio, even though I reduced the cost. Okay. Do you see what I, let's see, sells you, do you see what I did? Uh, 
Oh, Celgy, no, no longer the big dog. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What I get from it is that you increase the hospital benefits. Um, so mm -hmm. even though you're reducing the monthly payment, it feels like you're getting more. So exactly. now, now it's like, oh wow, like you, I, I'm paying less a month, but it looks like I'm actually getting more benefits. So it makes it and very. Is that a powerful thing? It is absolutely. Thing. Yeah. So you got to be careful with it though, because if you go too high and get too aggressive with it, now you're going to be upside down. And somebody asks you, well, why is the uh, any cause of death, the freedom of choice so low, now you've got a problem, right? So you've got to tweak it that makes sense. So I'm giving you guys a little bit of the art of how to sell and how to close, not just the science. The science says pick the budget, make the change, and move on. The art says get the budget, show value, hopefully higher for the overall portfolio, and you'll close at a much higher level. Lester, you have a question. Uh, I just want to make sure that I'm looking at the right numbers. So, you know, I understand the manipulation of the AD17 um, and the lessening of the death benefits. The overall is, is what the red number on the left is, is kind of what we'll be looking at. Is that the where the value, where we're saying? So that's if you die in a car accident and it combines oh. the two auto accidents yeah. and the yeah. two any cause of death. So that's the value that we're comparing, though? Well, I'm comparing the value of the, the entire amount on the right-hand side, as an example, the 10, 30, 60, 90, versus what the silver would be if the silver was actually the, you know, it, it, she kept it the same. But if she had had that lower, it would be 20, 40, and uh, 60, as opposed okay. to 30, 60, 90. So, so when good. somebody looks at that, they're going to say, oh, wow, I'm getting, you know, more. You're able to do that for me. Yes, I was able to get that done for you. So when you are um, adjusting it based off of a budget number, um, would you go into the silver plan as well and go ahead and lower all the others? No, I, in that case, again, we're getting to the art, right? I'd, cr I'd leave the bronze alone and create a fourth plan. Okay. And then I would compare the bronze against the fourth plan. Okay. That's how I would do it. That's why they give you four plans, right? So the gold, silver, bronze, if you have to downsell uh, based on the Perfect. budget, and if you do it the way I'm teaching it, then you're going to show the bronze versus the downsell and indicate the value that they're getting and just okay. say, I was able to do this for you. Normally I can't, or normally we don't do this, but now you look like you're an advocate for them. So what would you name that fourth plan? Uh, I'd name it the John plan or whatever the name of the client is. Okay. Your plan. I mean, it's just something that's specific to them because they're the ones that told you, hey, 120 is where I need to be. Okay, Which John, here's your plan. Possible. Yeah, I was able to do this for you. Sandra Young, I was able to do this for you. Now, when I do that, that's another closing technique because it sounds like that I went above and beyond, right? Right. There you go. Hey, Sam. How hey, low do you go? How low? Do okay. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. See, this is my little, uh, I don't understand that. That that was my iPhone responding to you. Um, I, I will tell you, I probably don't sell lower than three bucks per person per day because I can sell at a higher value when I sell, okay? So just to be clear, for those of us though on this call, what we're learning how to do is close. In the beginning, I don't care if you're closing at $2 a day or at 20, you're closing somewhere. As you get more and more experience, you're gonna say, you know, I'm closing at a higher level. I don't need to dip down automatically to two bucks. When we first started HP Pro, we were doing five, three, and one. If you go to any other agency in AO, they're doing seven, four, and two. What are we doing? 10, five, and three, or eight, five, and three, or however you want to look at it. And if you're making $16,000 a month, and that's what you tell me your income is, I'm going to do 10, <laughs> right? Right off the bat. And then move it around depending upon what that is, because I think you got more money. Because we teach our people to sell at a much higher level, not just closing at a higher level, but we're offering at a higher level, not at a lower level, right? And you get too low, then what ends up happening, the number one thing that kills you is the freedom of choice. Now it's below the cost of a funeral. And the whole point in the veterans market, what problem are we solving? Donaldo, 
in the veterans market, what's the problem we're solving? I got you, Donaldo. I know I got you. Go ahead. So the veterans market. In the market you're in, you got hired for, what is the number one problem we're solving? We're, uh, we're solving their, um, we're solving their, their burial and well, yes. I guess. Yes, yeah. you did. You were solving their funeral and final expenses, right? Yeah. So if you take, if you take the freedom of choice value and you drop it to like $4,000, now you're selling against yourself. You're not giving them enough to even pay for the funeral and final expenses, right? So it's all a balancing act. We got to be careful. That's why we have you guys start at $5 a day, because we know that that will be enough to, for most of these veterans to pay for their funeral and expenses. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I see a lot of nodding heads. You, uh, quick check-in. Do you guys feel much better now in day, what is it, seven, as opposed to day one? Absolutely. Are you feeling better? So much better. Definitely. Seniors so are like going... I don't really know if I feel any better. I'm not sure. This guy keeps asking me questions. All right. The whole goal here is to help you guys uh, make, I'm sorry, ensure you guys feel better about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And we try to give you every advantage to win. Okay. All right. Who's my other person? I know I had three. Lester, is it you? That's me. All right, Lester, we're going to be extraordinarily disappointed if you and that horse can't come up with the right answers when you're doing this for me. Everybody brace yourself. Here we go. Go, Lester. Hi, Sam. Just wanted to make sure that uh, you can see my screen okay? Yeah. Very good. Now, the next question they have me ask is what is going to fit your budget best? Because it doesn't matter to the veteran service organization which program you or any vet required to qualify for. My job is to customize the benefits to fit your needs. So here we have the silver package, which is $6 a day for you and your wife. We have 74 thousand covered for you and being that your wife of course is a female they usually li live longer so she is covered at 94,000. Uh, we also have the health benefits for accidents emergency room daily hospital and intensive care we get 150 dollars that's for you your wife or your son if you guys go to the emergency room for any treatment and you get paid that within 72 hours we also have a daily hospital benefit. So if you go to the emergency room and have to go to the hospital or stay at the hospital, that'll actually be $450 for that first day because it'll be the combination of both. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lester, Lester, I'm confused. Yes, sir. How can I help you? you? That's what I'm here the for next to... question they have me ask is what's going to fit your budget the best? And now you're telling me all of this stuff here, right? What is the next thing in the script after you show the benefit summary button? They just need to know, did you want to be like, ah, man, <laughs> the script is right there. Lester, Damn, they you, just... you, my friend, you get caught in the trap of, I know this pretty well, so I'm just going to do a lot of this. No need. No need. Go ahead. Start over. So, Sam, the next question they have me ask is, what is going to fit your budget the best? Because it doesn't matter to the veteran service organization which program you or any veteran try to qualify for. My job is simple. is to My job is to customize the benefits to your needs. Mm -hmm. They just need to know, did you want to be like most veterans and go with what they are recommending? And the plan I've showed you that's up on the screen sets aside $6 a day for you and your wife or $365, I'm sorry, to clarify that $6 for you and $6 for your wife, which is $12 a day, which comes out to $365 per month. As you can see, you get a lot more coverage for a bit more contribution. What? I messed that up. What? Sorry. Uh, I said that wrong, Sam. Let me correct myself. Uh, oh, so gotcha. Okay, so no, you don't have to say it again. We know you said it wrong. That's fine. 
Hey, um, I going to need some time to think about that. That $365 is a pretty big chunk of change. So let me think about it. Send me the plan, and, uh, you know, mail it to me. I'll, and uh, if I decide I want to go with it, I will call you. Now, that, uh, now I totally understand that, Sam. This is a, a lot to digest. Uh, but now, usually when members don't take advantage of their benefits in the enrollment period, it's very rare. And it's for one of three reasons. Either they didn't understand something, they didn't think they need it, or it is an affordability issue, Sam. Uh, which one of these is for you? Do you understand everything? Well, I want to take some time to, to go through the various pieces to make sure I understand everything. And that, that makes sense too. Um, but I can, we can use this time to answer any questions and um, <laughs> actually. Nice. Hey, what is the one phrase I taught all of you to use when somebody puts you in that spot? I, that's exactly uh, what I'm here. That's exactly why I'm here. here. Right, Lester? Hey, that's exactly why I'm here. That's why I'm taking the time to walk through and show you everything. It's exactly why I'm here. I'm here to answer all those questions, do all that stuff. Okay, you can stop sharing, Lester. I love it. Lester is willing to step up to the plate. He's like, I Ooh. got this covered. And then he gets hammered. It's like going into the uh, lion's cage, Anna. Yeah, but it's all good, right? My job is to help you, not to beat you down and make you feel bad about anything. You did fine. Everybody did fine. So uh, we're gonna. I'm going to do this later, uh, and I will present to one of you, and you guys can use whatever objections you can, and let's see how I'm able to navigate through that. We're probably going to do that uh, after we spend this quality time with Eddie. Eddie Leon not only is one of the top performers in all of AO International, he's also one of the top leaders in AO International. He'll tell you a little bit about his history. But the one thing I want everybody to know right from the word jump, Eddie was no better than any of you on day one. And he will readily admit that. He was no better than any of us. But he has gotten to a point now where he's pretty darn good and he's coaching and mentoring people who are turning in stellar performances. So rather than give a warm welcome like you normally do for me in the first week, we've learned how to do it a little bit better. Let's give a warm welcome to Eddie Leon. Welcome, Eddie. Thank you for welcome, your time. Welcome. Thank for you for being here, Eddie. Here for you. Ready to learn. What is going on, guys? I appreciate the uh, the warm welcome. I, I always appreciate the warm welcomes when, every time I come in here, Sam. You could do a great job of making sure that they make you feel good. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's because um, we went through a week of pain where they didn't <laughs> give me a warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, guys, I wanted to spend some uh, quality time here with you guys to go over a couple of different things. Uh, major part being over closing. Um, and the most important part over closing is going to be how to handle objections. Um, now, this is uh, this is really, really important because as you guys know, um, everything about the presentation is going to be important. But this is, I would say, arguably the most important because guess what? This is where you're going to get paid, right? This is where you make money, okay? So you're going to want to make sure that your uh, closing is on point. Uh, now, before I get into uh, some pointers that I wanted to go, uh, go over with you guys is uh, I did want to talk about like my background within the company. So that way you guys can understand and know that whatever track that you feel like you're on right now, listen, at the end of the day, don't compare yourself to anybody else's path within this business. Okay. Your job is to be able to uh, take in the information and implement the information as quickly as you can right? Not everybody learns at the same speeds. So to kind of take you back, when I first started, and this was back in 2017, a little over five and a half years ago now, um, I knew nothing about insurance. I knew nothing about sales. My background was like restaurants and stuff. So I knew nothing about this, but I was very, very eager to come in and learn because what is one thing that we always preach? What you put into this business is exactly what you're going to get out of it, right? That's the most important part that stood out to me. Because I knew that I was putting in like the amount of effort and the amount of hard work I was putting into working in a restaurant and I applied it to this, man, like I'm, I'm going to be super successful, right? Uh, and so when I had first started, it was really, really tough for me because I'm 20, 21 years old. How many 20, 21 year olds have life insurance? 
Not many, right? So it was kind of really tough for me to be able to get behind selling something that I couldn't exactly like believe in, right? But one thing that really made me see the difference was seeing people that were within my age group and just seeing everyone um, that I was surrounded by just being really, really successful. So that made me really want it. Now, you guys will go through a point to where you'll have some, uh, you might have a rocky start or you'll go through some dry spells. But at the end of the day, you will all go through a moment to where everything just kind of clicks. And the moment that it clicks for you is where the selling process actually becomes the easiest thing about the business. When in right now, it may seem like that could be the hardest, right? But once it becomes the easiest part of the business, there is no telling and no limits to where you can take this business, okay? So for me, when I first started, I probably had sold like not that much, like within like, cause I had started midway through 2017. Um, I took two months training by the way, and it was all unpaid training. You guys now have a training structure towards two weeks. So obviously it really, really helps because we're very, very structured now. Uh, and so I took two months training and didn't make a, a lick of money. So when I got released, this was halfway through the year, uh, from June. So I would say September, I think I had made like 10, $15,000 within the business, which is pretty good. At first though, I completely sucked. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was horrible, trash. And again, that was because I just didn't really take it as serious as I should have. Once I really started to take it serious and once I didn't really care what the outcome was going to be, I just made sure that I did my job. I made sure that I provided the client with the best um, like 45 minutes hour of their life. I knew that I was gonna be okay. Once that happened, it clicked for me. So from October till December 31st of 2017, I made a little over 85 grand. And that was insane because I'm 22 now at the, at the time. That was more money than I, I could ever imagine having. And then from there, the selling process became easy. Then I got into training. Then I started training people. And then the training became something that I really fell in love with because I wanted to see other people change their lives as well. And now to where we are here today, right? Being able to train people from all over the country. That's crazy. Being able to have the opportunity to do this all from home. I had to wake up at 6 a.m., get to my area that was two hours away from my first appointment at 8 a.m., run appointments all the way till about 9 p.m., 10 p.m. And then if that sit took two hours or an hour or something like that, then I had a two-hour drive home and I wouldn't get home until like, midnight, 1 a.m., and then do the same thing the next day. And I did that for four years. So appreciate what you guys have in front of you, the opportunities to be able to make the same amount of money, be as efficient, and having it all working from home, right? So definitely be appreciative of the opportunity. Be appreciative of your guys' as leaders, your guys' as trainers, because remember, especially those that have been here pre-COVID, we have a different appreciation um, for how the business works now, okay? Uh, and some of you guys may not understand it. Maybe someday you will. Maybe we might go back to in-person again, right? But, um, but I definitely prefer the, the virtual side of the business for sure, right? And I'm sure all you guys will too. So that's my background. Again, when I first started, I was not good. But one thing that I was told was uh, from the beginning, well, Mark Dushai always told me, if your closing is good, no matter what happens within your presentation, you will at least be guaranteed to make money, right? So I really wanted to make sure that my closing was good. Because when I first started, again, my presentation, I felt rocky, but I really wanted to drive the point home on my closing. So anytime that I did close somebody, it made me a good amount of money to where it held me over for a good week, couple of weeks and stuff like that. And it just kept on going until it finally clicked. Right. So again, we're going to be touching on closing here today. All right. And specifically objections. Now, if I were to ask you guys, there are five main common objections that we get within the home. Now, as you guys have been a part of the training, you guys have been able to see ride alongs. You guys have been able to see your trainers uh, run appointments and stuff like that. What would you guys say is the number one objection that you guys uh, will get? I can't afford it. Can't afford it. Okay. Yes, absolutely. That is the number one objection. That is the most common. I can't afford it. Okay. Now, the great part about I can't afford it is that it's also the easiest one. Okay. Why do you think that is? 
because you can adjust the prices. Absolutely, right? You can always adjust the price. So if you ever go into an appointment and do your entire presentation, they hit you with you can't, they can't afford it. Know that this is the easiest one that we can get over, but we because we can always work with the price. Okay. Now, second one. What's the second most common objection that we uh that you think you're gonna get? I want to think about it. There you go. That's simple. Let's start. Mute yourself, man. Have everybody else have a turn. Sorry. Second most common one. I'm I'm just messing with it. But yeah, second most common one is gonna be I need to think about it. Now, the way that I like to structure these objections, they all tie into each other. Okay. And you guys will see what I mean once I go through them individually. So yes, the second most common one is going to be, I need to think about it. Sherry, what do you think the third most common objection is gonna be? Sherry? Sherry's a little feeling under the weather. Weather? Okay, I gotcha. Leslie, what do you think? Maybe I don't have time right now. Okay. I don't have time when right now kind of comes to uh, either booking an appointment or kind of in the realm of like, I need to think about it. Right. So we're going to go over that. So the third most common one is going to be, I already have insurance. I already have insurance. I'm trying to find my sheet where I had these all written out as well so I can be a lot more sheltered for you guys. But um, the fourth most common one, what would you guys say it would be? I don't want this. I don't no, that. I don't want it. Here's the thing. If you guys... If you guys get, I don't want it, or I don't need it, know that that is not a closing issue. That is a presentation issue, okay? If you ever get, I don't want it, or I don't need it, that means you did not build up enough value in your presentation. You have to build value within the presentation. So if you get, I don't need it a lot, and becomes a reoccurring thing, that is something that we can fix within the presentation. So again, that's a presentation issue, not going to be a closing issue. <clears throat> so the fourth most common one is going to be, um, I need to uh, I need to talk it over with like a family or friend, or I need to talk it over. Financial there. advisor, that type of thing. Perfect. Yes. I need to talk it over with my family. I need to talk it over with my financial advisor. Things like that. Well, I'm glad you wrote them down, Sam. I, had to no, I have them all, dude. I've been through this with you a few times. <laughs> so, like, my understanding is that we're sort of like a financial advisor being licensed in insurance. We don't maybe have the security part, but we're still advising people for protecting their family. That's a great point. And we'll, we'll kind of address that once we get to uh, that last objection. So typically four or five most common objections. Those are the most uh, that you guys are going to get though. Okay. So um, Sam, put them in the chat, make sure you guys uh, write them down and then we're going to tackle them one by one. Okay. So the first one we're going to tackle can't afford it. Okay. Now, a lot of the objections that you guys get, it's really going to come down to one reason why. And that's going to be a pricing issue. They didn't like the price that they just saw, okay? Now, are you gonna get people that just simply won't make a decision and stuff? Yeah, sure, you'll get people that just absolutely will not make a decision. But hey, you know, you're not gonna close 100% of the people that you sit down with either. It's about maximizing every presentation that you can possibly get. So if you get, I can't afford it, this is how we tackle it, okay? You want to understand why, right? So my biggest question, I always like to respond with a question, okay? So if they tell me that they can't afford it, 
I want to make sure that they at least understand everything that I'm going over with them. Okay. So I always like to talk about the concept first. I want to make sure if everything that we talked about holds value. I want to make sure that everything that I presented to them, they see the benefit in having it. Right. So this is my opening line. So Leslie, I completely understand. Um, you know, they said that you, that you can't afford it. Right. Let me ask you a question. Taking the price aside, does the concept make sense? Yes. Okay. Now, what are the concepts? Now, my job here is to be able to run through all the concepts that we had just talked about within the presentation. So, Leslie, the concept makes sense that you would like your funeral and your final expenses taken care of, right? Yes, it would make things okay. easy. Absolutely. The concept makes sense that you would like to make sure that your income or your spouse's income comes in for you each and every single month for this set amount of years, correct? Right. Okay, perfect. And you see the value in having it, right? Right. Okay. And the concept makes sense that if something were to happen to you or your spouse, that you would like your uh, mortgage taken care of, or that you would like your debts taken care of, so on and so forth. Like I said before, all the benefits that we had gone over with that client, that's exactly what we're going over as far as concepts go, right? So after I asked uh, the client all of that, okay, so Leslie, the concept makes sense and you see the benefit in having them. So you want to do it, right? Right. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So you're just telling me that that $7 a day or that $6 a day, are you telling me that that's taking food off the table or is that putting you in a position to where uh, you can't pay your bills? Yes, it's a making me okay. a little uncomfortable. Gotcha. Okay. I'm glad that you told me that, Leslie, because my job is to try and help you. It's not to hurt you. Okay. So if you're telling me that's putting you in a position to where it's taking food off the table, I'm not even going to let you do it. Okay? okay. But I know you see the value in having the benefits. So how about we do this instead? And then so, you're going to adjust it. Exactly. So key lines here, right? The first one is going to be, at the start of it, does the concept make sense? Does the concept make sense that you want all these benefits in place? So you see the benefit in having it, you actually want it, right? Then they respond, yes. Okay, so are you just telling me that the price, is that taking food off the table or is that putting in a position to where you can't pay bills? And it's gonna go one of two ways. Either they say, yes, 100%, can't do that. Or they're gonna say, ah, uh, it wouldn't be like, you know, terrible. It just doesn't make me feel good, you know? So my response to that is, okay, so it's not a matter of affordability. It's a matter of comfortability. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I just want to be comfortable with it. Okay, perfect. How about we do this instead? So either which way it goes, you're done. You're going to down close either way. Okay. Now. Once you down close, because remember, you have you guys' screen shared when you're showing them uh, their options. You're going to unshare your screen. And if you're showing them 6 or $7 a day, I would make it a big point of emphasis to make these price drops pretty significant. Okay? So you're going to want to drop it down at least 2 to $3 a day. So that also means that for each and every single one of you, you need to be able to show and feel comfortable with showing high numbers, okay? I know in the script and then the presentation, it tells you to show $2.50 a day or $3 a day. But if you come across someone that, you know, can tell you that they're not able to afford it, where are you gonna be able to down close from there, right? You want these price drops to be pretty significant to make it look a lot better. For example, let's just say we let's just say we show seven dollars a day. So now, how I'm going to lead into closing it is just like this. So Leslie, not not taking off too much uh, of your benefits away, actually, almost keeping every single one of them, just a little bit less coverage, but nowhere near seven dollars a day or what would be two ten a month or two forty a month. Instead, you're only looking at setting aside about $4 a day. 
and that makes better sense for me. So Leslie, four dollars a day, you're looking at about one twenty a month. That should be a lot better, right? Correct. So you want to make sure that you're able to assume the close as well, right? Right. Assume the close. Asking yes questions. Okay. You want to shy away from saying, can I, or is this, you want to shy away from using any phrase, using those, those specific phrases. You want to be very, very assumptive because worst case scenario, guess what? They'll always correct you. They'll always tell you, no, that's still not comfortable, but you want to be very, very assumptive. So again, not taking away too much of your benefits or not dropping down your coverages too much, but not even the same galaxy as far as price goes. Instead of $7 a day, you're only looking at setting aside $5 a day or $4 a day, which would be $120 or $160 a month. That should be a lot better, right? Absolutely. And you see what I just did there? That's a lot better, right? Remember, they're, they're looking at you. So you want to make it as much as an in-person interaction as you can make it. That should be a lot better, right? Absolutely. Now, if they still tell you that's financially uncomfortable, down close again. Make sure, again, that the content makes sense. If it is still taking food off the table, we'll down close again. Okay, we'll go with a more basic option then. So I'm not taking away too much of your benefits. But instead of the $4 a day or the $5 a day, you're only looking at setting aside $3 a day. And guess what? $3 a day is what you guys would have started off showing anyways, right? And then same exact thing. That should be a lot better, right? Three dollars a day, about ninety bucks a month. So that's very, very key there. Any other questions on can't afford it? Sure, I have a, a question because it was asked of me. How low would you go, Eddie? So great question. I personally. Starting off, as you guys are um, very, very new within the business, you know, it, it's going to depend for each person. Some people need that confidence boost. I remember I had one, um, one of my very brand new trainees close somebody for like 10 bucks a month or something like that, or 15 bucks a month for his first deal. But it was a confidence boost. It was him knowing that he can do it. So then you know, it just built upon that. That month, he ended up writing over 40 grand within that month. So it's going to vary per person. I would say, because it's it's going to depend on the client. You want to hold as much value within the benefits. And the biggest thing is I personally wouldn't go less than $2 a day. Okay. Now, again, this is going to be a little bit different depending on the client that you're meeting with, because if you can clearly see that the member truly wants it, you know, maybe show them $1 a day to at least get them started, get their foot in the door, because they can always increase their after. But a dollar a day, everyone should be able to swing, you know, a dollar a day, right? But again, I personally wouldn't go under like $2 a day just because that's significant enough to be able to know how much is coming out of the account and hold value as to what I just did. So for you, Eddie, with your, your new hires that come into your team, you're more interested in ensuring that they're closing because you could always help them understand the upsell process or not to down close so uh, aggressively. But the close for you is what's important in the beginning of the career. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because worst case scenario, guys, you can always like, you close somebody, you're always making money. 
you're always making money because not only do you get you know your advance, your bonuses, but you get your residuals too. David, you have a question? Yeah, I was just thinking through like if you're working with somebody that's not under the super combo, they're you know above what 65 or whatever. I guess it's 60, right? Above 60. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, a dollar a day is not going to give them hardly any coverage. If so, how would you? I mean, that's is that even going to be worth it for somebody like that? So that's a great question. So you can go about it in one of two ways, David. One, what I typically like to do is I like to keep the value in it very, very strong. So what I mean by that is if someone is that age and I don't want to show them a dollar a day just because I personally feel like that won't hold a ton of value, then I'll tell them, David, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I can drop it down to, you know, five bucks a month, but how much value is that really going to give you? You see what I mean, David? You know, at the end of the day, it's always better to hold something of value so you know what you have in place and build upon that afterwards, right? And then they'll be like, you're right. Because dropping it down to five bucks, what, what is that going to do to help you? That's not going to help you. So that's one way. That's how I would go about it. But on the other, on the other end of that spectrum, if you can clearly see that someone truly wants it, you can go about it in an aspect to where, listen, I personally wouldn't recommend it but at least to be able to lock in your age. I mean, do you ever challenge, in. do you ever challenge them like a little bit like saying, well, you know, we're talking about what's provide, what's going to protect your family after the unfortunate happens, you know, so $5 a day would really be kind of our baseline to add value to your family after you pass. I mean, do you, do you ever have that kind of discussion or, or is that too Ooh. much? No, it's always good to be very direct and very real with the client that you're meeting with, right? And we're kind of, we're going to touch on exactly how to do that in a respectful manner. So that way they don't take it the wrong way. Now, I don't like to challenge someone in the aspect to where I'm getting in like in an argument or getting into like a back and forth with the client, because that is not my job. My job is not to go back and forth with a client. It's not to argue with them. My job is to be able to provide a service for them that they're going to need for one of the most important times in their life. And if I can convey the value in that, then they will see that, right? But you can be very direct, absolutely. <clears throat> but as far as like, uh, you know, them saying uh, to be able to kind of go back on uh, the last question, if you can show like a dollar a day or $2 a day for someone that's a little bit older, um, I would tell them, listen, I understand you really, really want it. We, what we can do is lock in your age and lock in your health where it is right now. So that way you can always build upon that afterwards. And maybe we can start off with a one or $2 a day. Now I'm telling you right now, I personally wouldn't recommend it because you know it's not doing a whole ton, but at least to be able to get your foot in the door, it's something. Every little bit helps. And then we'll, they'll agree. So you can work on that. Um, on both ends of the spectrum. And again, it's going to depend on the client. I personally do um, do the first way to where I just tell them, you know, what's $5 really going to do for you? It's not really holding a ton of value. And let them understand that. Okay, cool. So second, I need to think about it. So anytime that we're addressing, I need to think about it. Here's what you should process in your mind. If anyone tells you that, that they need to think about it, it's either one, because the concept doesn't make sense to them, or two, it's a pricing issue. Right? So if they tell you that they need to think about it, I'm going to start the same exact way that I just did with I can't afford it. So OJ, you tell me that you need to think about it, right? Now, OJ, let me ask you a question, okay? Taking the price aside, the concept makes sense, right? Yeah. 
Okay, so you want to you want to make sure that your funeral and your final expenses are taken care of. You want to make sure the income protection is like there for you and your spouse in case any one of you were to pass. Like all this stuff, like you see the value in having it all, right? Right. Okay, so you want to do it, right? Yeah. Okay, so are you just telling me that the seven dollars a day is that taking food off the table? Um. It's, it's a little high. Okay. So that's exactly what's going to happen. When you ask him these types of questions, that's when the truth is going to come out. They'll just I know like me personally, like, like just like putting myself in that position, like I would be like, I could probably do a little less than that, but like, I'm going to want to look over my bank statements and look at my budget and things like that. So I'm just kind of thinking like putting myself in that position. That's how I would answer. Exactly. So it's going to be a, a matter of comfortability what is going to be comfortable for them, right? So now, OJ, let's just say, because at that point, we already know what to do. We're going to down close from there, right? You already told me it was too high. You're very direct with me. You're honest. You said it was too high. So what, we're, what are we going to do? We're going to down close from there. So OJ, tell me that you uh, still need to think about it. Yeah, I still need to think about it. Tell me it's not too high. It's just the fact that you still want to be able to have some days to think about it. Yeah, it's not too high. I just need some time to look things over and think about it. OJ, I completely understand where you're coming from because I'm the same exact way, all right? But let me ask you a question, OJ. Who are the most important people in your life? Uh, my family. Your family, okay? How much are they worth to you? I, I guess I haven't really thought about that. Well, let's think about it. How much are they worth to you? Well, I'd want to make sure that like what whatever they would lose with me being gone, like they wouldn't feel it. I'm not even talking about that, OJ. I'm talking about your family specifically, your wife, your kids, the people that you care about most. How much are they worth to you? I honestly would say priceless. Like there's not really a price I could put on that. And OJ, I agree with you. You cannot put a price on family, right? So let me ask you this. When would be the most important the the most important time to take care of the most important people in your life well right now actually well actually it was yesterday but i'm here right now yeah <laughs> i like that so here's the thing a couple things when you know talking to the client in a very direct manner but not being obviously you know rude or anything like that it's about having them truly understand about what we're doing here, right? So asking OJ the very same question as you can to any other client, who are the most important people to you? 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to say their family. Then the following question is going to be, how much are they worth to you? Now I had to pull it out of OJ. You might have to pull it out of some other people too, right? But again, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to say exactly what OJ said. Priceless. So then the follow-up, when would be the time to take care of the most important people in your life? right now you're absolutely right and that's why i'm here today to be able to help you but if you're a funny guy like me i'll say yes today but you're lucky i'm here right now yeah i'm gonna have to remember that <laughs> guys there's only three times that people think about life insurance okay and you can even tell us that it's fine there's three times that people think about life insurance. When someone happens uh, to someone they know, when something happens to them personally, or when it's too late and they can't qualify to get it. Those are the only three times people th actually think about life insurance.
Actually, four. When you have someone like me sitting in front of you. Right? Here's the thing, guys. When you are presenting what the services that we provide to these families are, you have to convey that message with emotion. You have to build them up. With the truck you have to make them see emotionally why it makes sense to have it. And your close is going to be used as to why it would make sense to keep logically. So one of the biggest things that Dan Paravicini says, one of the top producers in the company, people buy things off emotion, people keep it based off of logic. And I couldn't agree more. Now, are you going to get some people that just will not make an on-the-spot decision? Yes, guys, it's going to happen. Again, like I said, you know, the top producers in the company don't close everybody that they sit down with. But again, it's about maximizing your opportunity. You guys should be, um, you guys are in a position right now to where you're a part of the best training program in the entire or like in, in the entire company of AO because no one else has a training class just like this and no one else specifically um, goes over closing. Like the regular way that AO teaches closing is to show the report card and then bring value that way. But you're not really conveying that message to the client like we are right now, okay. right? Now, that is why the company average closing ratios are going to be 20, 25, 30%. If you want to be like your guys' leaders to where you can close at a 40, 50, 60, 70% rate, this is what's going to be able to help you. Sandra, question? Um, yeah, so if OJ pushed it a little bit farther and said, you know, I really do need to take a look at my bank statements. Um, and not make a decision on this right now. And so if he was kind of like saying, I'm not willing to make a decision on this right now, what would you call him back like the next day? Or how would your approach be if he's just stopping the cell right then? That's a great question. So Sandra, and, and this is what I was going to touch on next. If they, if you hit them with that and they still tell you, you know what, I understand what you're saying. I'm just one of those people that just cannot make an on-the-spot decision, right? Here's what I would say. Because listen, guys, like within our type of sales um, atmosphere, follow-up is not really a, 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 a thing, Right? Now, follow-up is, is very, very important in like almost every other sales, sales business. But the reason for that is because you have to build a trust. For us, there's already a trust that's been built because we're working through them um, through their veterans group organizations or their unions. Like something has already been established, right? So that's a really key thing that you guys need to understand when you're meeting with these people. Your job is to be able to make sure that we can make that decision right then and there. And if they don't, that's okay. Sometimes maybe I've never had it happen to me before to where I reschedule and then they they wanted to do it. I've never had that happen to me. Never had it happen to me. Typically, if they don't make that decision right then and there, they're typically not going to do it. Their minds are typically just made up. They're just simply telling you in a nice way they don't want to do it. Because people just, you know, aren't confrontational. But let's just say if OJ hit me with it, well, like one more time, you know, it sounds great. Um, I understand what you're trying to tell me. It would be right now, but I just got to be able to go through my statements. I got to be able to go through like my budget to make sure it fits, right? Basically, what he's just telling me is he didn't like the price, right? He saw the value in having it. And, and I would tell you, so OJ, I completely understand where you're coming from. And please, please don't mistake my passion for pushing this. And I would like for you guys to write that down. 
because that's going to be able to alleviate anyone trying to tell you you're being pushy or anyone tell you that you're you're being too aggressive or too assertive. Please don't mistake my passion for pushiness. And then I would go into asking. So OJ, please don't say, please don't mistake my passion for pushiness. I just want to be able to put you in a better position than how we met here today. But can I talk to you like you're my brother? Or can I talk to you as if like you're a very close relative? Is that okay? He says, okay, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sorry. I was hitting space bar and it was putting spaces in the chat. You're good. So, OJ, let me ask you a question, you know, what would you say, um, you know, when you go to the gas station, do you typically get like snacks and stuff like that? Um, not actually, no. Not actually? I mean, what is something that you kind of really like spend your money on that doesn't really cost a ton of money? Yeah, you know, like, uh, breakfast on my way to work. Breakfast on your way to work. Okay. Everyone has always has something, by the way. For, like for me, it's like grabbing like Red Bulls and like snacks at the gas station or like Monsters or something, right? But or, everyone typically always has like something, right? So, OJ, let me ask you a question. I mean, you and I both know that you know where your budget is set at already. You know how much you can spend. You know how much you can spend. Obviously, you don't really mind, you know, setting aside the extra couple of bucks, spending money on that breakfast sandwich or that coffee, right? Right. Now, in this case here, I'm not comparing it to that because this is obviously going, going to be a lot more important than your breakfast sandwich and your coffee every single morning. But I want the biggest thing here is I want to make you feel comfortable about what you're doing. Okay. I don't want to make you feel stressed out. So here's what we're going to do instead. And then you down close. So biggest thing is about if they hit you with, I need to think about it one more time. Your goal, your go-to is going to be down closing. Well, I actually have a question because I know me personally, like one of the reasons I would want to think about it is because I would be more comfortable. Oh no, I'm actually answering my own question already. Because I know me personally, I would want the higher amount. I just want to make sure I can afford it first. Yes. So I already see like where like to sell to somebody like me, you would down close and then not forget to mention that I you can, can always move up in the future. future. I can always move up later. Okay. No, I already answered my own question then. Never mind. There you go. See, OJ is the average client that you meet with. But again, he's I know me personally, like that's literally the only reason why I would have to think about it because I do want the higher amount because I, I do think about life insurance as being important. There you go. So again, that's going to come from value. How much value did you bring um, and show for the benefits? If you show the value, the decision will always be made. A decision will always be made. Either they're going to decide to do it or they're going to decide, decide not to do it. But a decision is going to be made. And I'm, and I'm glad that you bring this up, uh, OJ, because you put in the chat, I honestly am a hard person to sell anything to. I'm glad that you put that down because you have to treat the client as if it was you how would you like to be sold how would you like to have someone present something to you like if you know you're already a hard person to sell well then that means that you should probably spend a little bit extra time showing additional value to what you're you're giving them right me i'm the opposite i'm an easy sell i'm an easy sell i'll buy anything so quick question, do you ever get into showing the value like of cash value as 
like for somebody like Eddie that would, you know, want to know what they're buying into, so to speak? Um, that's like a touchy subject. And let me tell you why. Because cash value is not going to pertain to everybody that you sit down with. Cash value could bring a lot of value to maybe someone that's a little bit, that's a lot younger. Mm -hmm. But cash value can't really be valuable to someone that's 50, 60, 70, right? And you guys are going to be dealing with veterans. That's going to be the bulk of your clientele that you're going to be meeting with, right? So I wouldn't use cash value as a... As, as something to be able to bring value to it's you're going to more so rely on the on the concepts for sure i was just thinking more on the like let's say oj is um one of my one of the referrals that i got and sure. he's 32 years old and so somebody like that would be wanting to know about that side so absolutely okay. and you can but here's the thing when you're building your packages you're building your packages. Um, it's you're giving them a diverse program. You're giving them whole life. You're giving them term. You're giving them like um, you're giving them a whole bunch of different benefits in place, right? To be able to build a ton of cash value to be really, really significant, you have to sell them a whole ton of whole life, right? Like you can't really build um, you can't really build up the cash value on someone that you're selling like a thirty thousand dollar policy to. It's not really going to build a ton of cash value, no matter how old they are. You know what I mean? Now, as you guys get more tenured within the business, that is always an asset that we can use to be able to explain to a client. But starting off, I probably wouldn't use it right now. All righty. So that's, I need to think about it again. It's going to come down to concept and price in most cases. Now, after the third time, if they still need to tell you that they need to think about it, it's okay. Chalk it up, take it as a loss. We're not going to sell everybody, collect referrals and then a good note and try and roll some referrals and get into a, a, a sit thereafter. It's okay. All right. But after that third, I need to think about it. You don't want to press them too much. You want to end on a good note, collect your referrals, try and roll a couple and do that. Now, I already have insurance. Hmm. I already have insurance. These last two, um, you might get here and there. These aren't going to be like too, too common, but you shouldn't really get, I already have insurance at the end because you're going to know that within your presentation, right? And it's already incorporated into the presentation that we should assume that they already have insurance anyways. Going into your clothes, guys, you should one or going into any presentation, you should already assume that they already have insurance and you should assume that you're going to get objections at the end. You should assume that automatically. Why? So you're prepared. So that way it allows you to be able to know your rebuttals. And if you need them, you can bring them out. And if you don't get any objections, that's even better because you did a phenomenal job in displaying the value so much enough that they don't even need to think twice. I ran a referral the other day. Leslie and uh, Emily were able to be a part of it. How long did it take for them to make a decision? They were already prepared to say yes as soon as you got them on the phone. And it's because you're building up the benefits so much. I build them up throughout the entire process of, of talking to them on the phone, um, at the beginning of the presentation, in the middle of the presentation, at the end. Like I'm very, very assumptive, very assumptive. So by the time that I get to the end, I'm ready 
if they do tell me, you know, I need to think about it or that they can't afford it, like I'm ready for it. But if they don't give me any objections, all better. But you guys should expect objections and you should expect um, for every client that you sit down with to have insurance already. So that way you're prepared for it. Now, if you're still getting it here at, at this moment in time at the close, because some people are still going to hit you with it. I would go back to the concepts, okay? Meaning, let's just say, um, Tyler, you hit me with, you already got insurance, right? Okay, yep, I already have insurance. So Tyler tells me he already has insurance. Tyler, I'm super happy that you do, and I would actually be concerned if you didn't. So listen, most of my members typically have four or five policies in place already as it is, and that's phenomenal, okay? But let me ask you a question. Like, you have your life insurance and stuff like that. The reason why our benefits are so important is because of the programs that you have in place. So again, we're going back to the concepts. Most importantly, being that freedom of choice certificate. I would always go back to the freedom of choice certificate. Do you have this freedom of choice program in place that will allow your family to get that money immediately in the event of your passing? Here's one thing that you probably don't know, Tyler. Most insurance companies can legally hold your money for up to six months. Okay? So that allows them to do two things. One, figure out how you die to see if they even want to pay you. And two, that insurance company, the premiums that you pay, they put in a money market account and they invest that money. So they want to make money off of the your premiums, right? So they, they might hold it until... You know, they, they either make a little bit of money or just minimize the amount of money that they're paying out compared to, you know, what you gave them. In our case, we don't do that to you. Upon us receiving the death certificate, you will get, get that money immediately. That way, one, you don't have to come out of pocket or put a card on file. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to come out of pocket uh, you don't have to borrow money, take out a loan, or God forbid, start a GoFundMe page. Because if you're waiting for those other insurances to pay out, you know, it's going to be tough. I just had a, um, someone text me today. Hey, my mother passed away. Um, how are we able to get the money if we don't know her social? What? It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. You know, most, most people think that they're prepared. You either need policy number, social, you're going to need these important things to be able to make a claim on the money. People don't think about that. It's a question. Don't they usually, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm still a little under the weather. Uh, don't the social usually print, social was printed on a death certificate? Yeah, typically, but again, it takes a while to be able to get a death certificate in the first place, too. You know, sometimes it can it can take a little bit. So there, there's always like steps to be able to um, you know receive that money. We want to make sure that our clients process is as smooth as possible. So again. They tell you already have insurance. That's awesome. I honestly would be surprised and or concerned if you didn't. But remember, you have all these benefits set in place that you, I know you don't have. I know you don't have your freedom of choice benefit. I know you don't have income protection. I know you don't have your debt protection in place. These are things that have already been set up for you. It's just my job to be able to help you qualify for it. So as long as you see the value and everything, and it's not taking food off the table, it is in your best benefit to take advantage of it here today.
So again, you explain everything to them and then you bring them back to making a decision. So as long as everything makes sense and it's not taking food off the table, it is in your benefit to take advantage of it here today. Then lastly, I want to speak to my family. I want to speak to my financial advisor, things like that. Now, this one's not going to be like too, too common. Just because... Um, like we're dealing with veterans, blue collar workers. Most most of these people like don't have financial advisors in place. So this is like, you'll get like one in every like maybe 50 or hundred sets. But just in case you do get it, here's how you can be prepared for. So let's start with, they tell you, I want to talk to a family member, right? Hey, I want to talk to my dad. Hey, I want to talk to my mom. That probably would be a little bit more common than the financial advisor one, just because you're dealing with people on different ends of the spectrum. You're dealing with, you know, older clients that have been retired. They confide in their children. They might their children might handle their finances and stuff like that. Or on the end, the other end of that spectrum, dealing with maybe younger guys that um, confide in their parents, you know, opinions and stuff like that because they think they've had insurance for so long. You know, they might know something about it, things like that. So we'll deal with that one first. You know, I want to talk to a family member. I want to talk to my dad. I want to talk to my brother, my mom. I want to talk to my son. I completely understand. Always agree and proceed. I completely understand where you're coming from. So, David, I'll use you an example, okay? So, David, I completely understand where you're coming from, okay? Let me ask you a question. Does, does your dad handle benefits? Do they do insurance? No. Okay. Now, again, most cases, most people, family are not going to do insurance. Okay. My dad passed away. So <laughs> let's just say you use your, you're using your son, right? Or for example, your son or your dad, whoever it may be. Let's just say you can find your son then. All right. Does your, does your son do insurance? No, he's still in high school. He's still in high school. Okay. So either which way it goes, you let them know. The biggest thing about meeting here with you here today, David, is because your benefits, you know, all the stuff we're going over, the second that we get off this call, it's only going to get more confusing, right? And especially if like your dad or your son, like if they don't handle insurance, it's even going to get more confusing because let me ask you a question. What do they do for work? And you can come up with something random. They do this for work or they're still in high school or they do that for work, you know? Okay. You know, I would know one thing about being in that industry or being a part of like what they do. So the same way they're not going to understand how insurance works. So, you know, if you do have any questions, please ask David, because it's only going to get more confusing, right? So what questions do you have for me? And again, that's where the truth is more so going to be able to come out there. Cause then they'll just tell you that, you know, they can't afford it. Uh, go ahead, Emily. So you were talking about earlier about how if somebody has to consult with their child because the child maintains the finances for the parent. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. Uh, would it be smarter to whenever you're setting the appointment to ask them to have somebody that would help make the financial decisions with them to come to the appointment? That's a great point that you bring up and you definitely can, but realize in most cases, it's going to be tough, right? Because, um, because you're not going to know that, you know, um, unless you're sitting down with the member right then and there, um, if you're, if that's something, cause that's not something that you're going to run into often. Worst case scenario, if their children uh, handle their finances, like all, all in all, 
you're not going to know that typically until you go over like their income or their debts and stuff like that. And if that's the case, I would ask at that point to have that, um, that child be a part of the phone call. Okay. Thank and you. If, yeah. And if they're not able to, I would reschedule that appointment because it would not make any sense to go over numbers with someone that will not make a financial decision because they don't handle their finances. So these are things that you, again, you can kind of maneuver around at the needs analysis, more so at the close. Now, if you forget to be able to, uh, to bring it up at the needs analysis and you do get at the close, then I would reschedule. Because that means that, again, they are not able to make financial decisions without that person there. I wouldn't want them to make a financial decision without that person there, because if that person sees an extra 120 bucks come out of the account or 200 bucks come out of the account, they're going to ask them, hey, what is this? I don't remember. Cancel it. Then who does that hurt? Hurts us and them too. They, they might've seen the benefit. They probably just forgot about it. They might've seen the value in having it. Again, they could just, could, could have just forgotten about it. And then it hurts you too, because now you're getting a charge back and it hurts your retention. But now in the other aspect to where they do handle their finances, they just want someone's opinion or something like that. Again, I would, come in, I would maneuver it in the aspect to where I would ask them, oh, what do they do for work? Oh, okay. It's not insurance. Here's the biggest thing. Insurance and benefits can get very, very confusing. I want to know one thing about what they do for work or how, what their job entails on a day-to-day -day basis. Just like they probably don't know how this stuff works on a day-to-day -day basis as well. So if you have any questions, please ask away. Now, if they bring up that they want to talk to their financial advisor, this is going to be very uncommon, but in case, you know, you do get it, I'd be like, I completely understand. Okay. Um, now, I would ask him this, Sandra, let me ask you a question. Okay. Okay. I know that you confide in your financial advisor and you always, uh, you know, ask them about everything, but do you know what their, um, like job description is? Oh, goodness. No, no. Okay. So some people think that it's their job is to, to make you money and their actual job description is not that at all. Their job is to manage your money. Okay. So they get paid. And they make money whether you make or lose money in whatever investment, stock market, and whatever you do. You pay them to manage your money, right? Yes. Here's one thing that I want you to understand, Sandra. For us, it don't matter to us what you end up doing. Our job is to be able to go over these benefits with you and show you the importance in having, of having these in place, okay? So I understand that you would like to talk to your financial advisor, but just keep that in mind. They make money or they get paid whether you make or lose money and whatever investment you're doing with them, okay? So how can you truly feel that they have your best interest at heart? For us, you, you remember, you're, this is fully endorsed through the veteran group and or organization, okay? Now you've been a veteran for how long? Oh my goodness. It's been 25 years, 25 years, right? Their job is to be able to try and take care of you as much as they possibly can. That's why we're meeting here today. Okay. So, and, so as long as all the benefits make sense and it's not taking food off the table, it is in your best interest to take advantage of these today. Remember what? Okay. And so you're just focusing on the benefits of the plan. Mm -hmm. to um, get over any type of apprehension or a pause with the customer. So you're just going back right? saying, I, I want to make sure that your family is covered. 
Absolutely. Um, and that you understand the full benefits that you can get as a veteran because a lot of veterans don't understand the full scope of coverage. And that's my job just to go over that with you right now. Absolutely. So, and here's one other thing that I like to bring up too, especially when they talk about they, they need to think about it, that they already have insurances and that they want to talk to the financial advisor. This is where it all just ties it together because you can use this as well for any other one of those objections. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Sandra, the way you got, um, you got notified of us is through, um, you know, you ordered the, the wool kit, um, you know, and, and you're, or you're a veteran yourself, right? So yes. that's, that's one of the ways that we're going to be able to see these members. They either are better than themselves or they ordered the will kit because they know of someone that is a veteran, right? So they want to know about the veteran benefits. So here's the thing. We deal with 30,000 different union groups and veteran organizations across North America. Okay. Now, these groups and organizations have executive council members union presidents, union stewards, veteran quartermasters, financial advisors, okay? Sandra, let me put you in their position, okay? Let's just say you're this executive that's speaking on behalf of hundreds, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people within your group, okay? How long do you think it would take for you to make that decision? To make that decision? Yeah, to make sure that our benefits are the best uh, for your members. Oh, I think that maybe there might be a lot of time spent and research done just to make sure that I they have the best company to take care of everything. Absolutely. And I 100% agree with you. Because there's a lot of insurance companies out there. Uh, Absolutely. You know, I see on commercials all the time, it's kind of like, you know, there's something out there for like $10 a month for coverage. Exactly. So Sandra, let me ask you a question. If your veteran group organization could take their business elsewhere, don't you think they would have did that by now? Oh, sure. Absolutely. But they, they know that we're here to be able to take care of you guys and give you guys the best service possible. So if again, yes, questions. We have to ask a lot of questions with yes, right? Absolutely. That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, you got to be very something asking yes questions. Absolutely. But also it has to make sense for them logically because that's true. If they, if they could take their business elsewhere, they would have, right? But the biggest thing here that we want them to understand is that these benefits are in place and have already been approved and the thinking process has already been done for them. Mm -hmm. We're here at their convenience. Because remember, there's only three times people think about life insurance. Something happens to them personally, someone happens to someone they love or when it's too late and they can't get it. So again, it's just bringing value. Um, putting all together, bringing value to the benefits and conveying that message to the member. Any questions so far, guys? Any other questions? Um, actually, can you repeat those three one more time? Because I just want to make sure, because I am taking notes. And I want to make sure I took that down right. You said what the three times that people think about life insurance. Yeah. So, and I'm going to fix it right now because I actually ended up getting it wrong. So there's three times people think about life insurance. When something happens to someone you know, when something happens to you personally, or when you're sitting, when you have someone like me sitting in front of you. Those are the three times people think about life insurance. Or when they no longer qualify for it is what I put down to. Yeah, that, that kind of ties into when something happens to you personally. So yeah, that's the right way. Someone, something happens to, to someone you love, someone happens to you personally, or you have someone like me sitting in front of you. Good stuff, Eddie. <clears throat> we appreciate it. 
Absolutely. Does anybody have any questions for Eddie? So you did such a good job that no one has any questions, but I guarantee what will happen is I'll bring up one of these objections and then I'll get all the questions. <clears throat> so I, I wrote all this down. <clears throat> Pardon me, gosh, I have this cough. I have wrote it all down. Hey, hey, thanks a lot. I know, you know, push month isn't quite over yet. How's your team doing so far? How, how are things going out there? You guys killing it or what? Everything's going pretty good, Sam. Just trying to end the... Uh... The push one very, very strong here. I know uh, Halloween set some people back, trying to take the kids out trick-or-treating and everything, so we're just getting back to it today. Yep. So we got nine days left or something like that? Yep. November 10th. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Eddie. Really appreciate you coming in, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of everybody, but uh, thank you again. Absolutely. Um, I love being here, helping everybody out. If you guys need absolutely anything, you guys can always reach out to uh, to me, any one of your trainers. We're all willing to help you guys here, okay? Biggest piece of advice before I take off here is be patient, okay? Um, the results will come eventually. You just got to stick it through and do your part, okay? Some people are going to start off very, very fast. Some people are going to take a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more time than others, but that's okay, all right? Your job is to stay your course. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. And make sure that you guys chase 100 sets. 100 sets. All right. 100 sets will let you know exactly what type of producer you'll be. And if you guys are a part of this team, everyone here has a chance to be able to be a top producer. All right. So aside from that, I appreciate you guys' time. Appreciate you guys letting me speak to you here today. If you guys need anything, let me know. But I'll let you guys uh, have a great rest of training. Sam, appreciate you. Hey, appreciate Thanks. it too, Eddie. Thanks a lot. Eddie. Have a good one. Kill it, guys. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thanks, Thanks, Eddie. Thanks. And see, that fast he's out because he's got a team to run. He's got things to do. So a lot of good information uh, in terms of overcoming objections and doing all that stuff. Pretty much aligned with what uh, we've talked about, but I didn't touch on some of those things because so I want to leave a little bit of the thunder for our guest speakers, right? So, uh, Selji, what was your top takeaway? Okay, Tatiana, what was your top takeaway? Uh, he gave us the most, um, well, not the most, excuse me, the the top one reason people, you know, try to not get this. And he gave us some pretty good rebuttals for it and some pretty mm -hmm. good reasonings and, and building on value and showed us how to do that. He was awesome. Yeah, he's good. He adds an, uh, <clears throat> an emotional attachment and he's building a picture, right? Or painting a picture. So I like that the three uh, the times when people think about insurance, when something happens to someone they love, when something happens to them, or when I'm sitting with them. <laughs> Other than that, they tend to put it out of their mind, right? Okay, so let's see, Clevin, what would you what was your takeaway from that? Well, pretty much the same thing. Excuse me, my voice going in and out. <clears throat> uh, besides the uh, uh, the five uh, objections. Uh, I just learned that you you know you, you never have a negative connotation. You always positive, and you always ask yes, ask yes questions, answers that you you know they can't say no to. Yep, absolutely, that's good. Tyler, how about you? It was actually just defining the those four or were they five four main objections there and then really just deconstructing them down and seeing how he would actually deal with them in real life that was great nope, i can't afford it i need to think about it i already have it or you know what i need to spend uh time with my what did you say uh family member or financial advisor all right so those are the four major ones uh, and again you guys will figure out the right language how you want to do it i don't include this in the uh the script because this is the concepts are there but i wanted somebody again with uh you know credibility who's done this and who's coached this many times to kind of walk through it with you of those uh for i can't afford it emily johnson what would be the one that you would pick for the i can't afford it yeah No, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a okay. really good question. So definitely, I mean, 
as you said earlier, definitely go back and touch on your concept and your price and go back and readjust your bronze plan and see, you know, what their budget is, how things would fit their budget the best. Um, what really got me for him when he was speaking was if they really see that they want it, if we can really see that, then we need to be able to adjust for them and adjust as best as we can for them, mm -hmm. unless they just genuinely don't see a point necessarily. And they're just trying to lowball you to get you to get you to stop talking. <laughs> Good point. It's interesting. He talked about pricing, right? What, where does he, he starts really high, doesn't he? I mean, I what he was about telling us. yeah, I was just thinking about that. He starts high. So we, we talk about one to 10 and then we arrive in the middle because we make it easy for uh, students or people new uh, to insurance to get it right. One to 10 in the middle is five. Okay. Gotcha. But if you were going on any team, he would say, Hey, that's great. I love it. I want you to start presenting at $12. I want you presenting at 10 and then you down sell into five. That's how some of these averages are, you know, we have some teams where their averages is like $1,700. $1,800, right? The goal is $1,200, but they're getting additional value because when they downsell, they're downselling into other people's average. So don't be alarmed by that. You're going to figure out what makes the most sense for you. The one thing I would tell everybody is to divorce yourself from how much you think is a reasonable amount to spend, right? Because I know when I look at something, let's say my kids, right? Uh, when they were younger, I would say, man, I'm not going to spend 20 bucks for a piece of candy, right? Or $110 for Air Jordans. But it's all a matter of perspective, right? For those, for my kids, it was, hey, they really want that candy. It was worth it to them. So everyone looks at the value of something from their perspective. So never get caught in like, oh, I think that might be too much for me or whatever. Always think of it from their perspective. And they don't know what you're going to show them. They don't know it's going to be $5 a day, $7 a day, $10. They have no idea. So you're controlling all of that throughout the entire process. So do we feel pretty good now that we can overcome objections and we can close? We are feeling good? All right. So wasn't there three people? And I think we had one of them do it. Are we still waiting for two people to close me? No? Yes. Anybody? Uh, I thought we had three people and we all went through the presentations already. Was there any more? Oh, we did? Okay. No, that's fine. If we did, I, I don't want to leave anybody behind. <laughs> I definitely don't want to do that. Okay. So let's see. Do we need to practice the closing anymore or do we think we got it tight? Okay. For those of us who want to practice closing, raise your hands. Lester, David, Fuller. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut everybody loose, and I will tell your upline that you're available at 1.15. So at 1.15, I'll send the email out. If, if For those of you who want to stick around and practice uh, overcoming objections, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, but for everyone else who thinks that they got it tight, that's great. But here's what I want you to focus on. Today is Tuesday. What is the homework tonight, Selji? The homework tonight is to practice with your upline. Um, sorry, presentation graded and graded rubric emailed to course facilitator by the trainee. Right. So here's what happens on the first or the second Tuesday of the training course is when you are eligible to take your presentation rubric. So if you felt confident, you can get all the way through the entire thing. You could sit down with your upline and they can grade you. And then you send me what they gave you for a score and whatever comments they have. If you don't feel ready, that's okay. You have to get it done by Thursday night. So for all of us, we should be practicing. We should be ready. And we need to schedule that time with our upline today. So what I mean by that is if you're not ready to take it today, no worries, but I want you to schedule that time with Brenna Behan or with Eddie Leon or whoever your upline is. So that way that they have set aside some time that they're actually going to do it with you. Okay. 
Three things. <clears throat> you need to know if you passed or you failed as soon as you're done. Don't let a trainer tell you, oh, I'll give you the feedback later. No, no, no. Did I get it? Did I score enough points? Right? Because we're going through a training class. If you take a test, I should tell you if you passed, right? And they'll know immediately. They don't need to, to do any uh, political or sorry, uh, calculus to figure out your score. It's pretty straightforward. So that's number one. What's the second thing? I need to get a copy of the actual rubric sent back to me. No, okay. are they emailing that directly to you or are they giving it to They us? can do that if they choose. You work it out with them. Whatever's easiest for them. My job is to make it as easy as possible for them. I would prefer, prefer only, that they send it to you and you send it because I want you to have a copy of it, right? You need to know what are my comments. Now, a lot of times, some of these uh, uplines, they don't make the comments right away. They'll remember it and then they'll go back and type it up. Totally fine then they can send it to you later. But you should know the moment you're finished what your score is, right? And did I pass? So let's know that. Because if you didn't pass, and it happens, it's not a big deal, you need to take it over, which means you need to reschedule it right then. When can I do it again? So for me, I like to be a hard charger. I would take the test either today or tomorrow. That way, if I had any issues, I still have Thursday to finish the uh, rubric. Does that make sense to everybody? But then again, I would have been practicing over the weekend and done a bunch of stuff to make sure that I'm ready. All right, so that's number one and that's number two. What's number three? What's the third thing, Leslie? With the, with the rubric that you're talking about? No, no, the rubric, we already did that. That was one and two, right? You have to right. schedule it. And then once you take it, you got to know if you passed or failed. You need to get a copy of the result in the comments and you email it to me. That's one and two. What's right. the third thing in terms of the course requirements? Oh, skip. Oh, did I get you? Well, Emily, no. what's the third thing? What are, what are the course requirements? Anybody help her out? Course requirements. Is that the dirty call? I mean, there you go. Clevin wow. comes through in the clutch. There Thank you, go, Clevin. Clevin. 30 presentations or 30 ride-alongs observing and 300 dials. Looking at the DRB report, it would appear that we're not there as a team. Is that a fair? That's fair. Yes. Okay. So we need to schedule that time with our folks. If you need to practice your presentation, I'm totally down with that. Practicing that should not take the place of dialing and should not take the place of sitting through presentations. Because Eddie and I can talk all day long about how, how to overcome objections in the closing process. But unless you listen to Shayla, unless you listen to Ashley, actually do it, it's all academic. You need to see it in action and then take from each one of those the pieces that make the most sense to you that you're going to incorporate in your style. Does that make sense to everybody? So number one, number two, number three. Number one, schedule the rubric. Once you take it, make sure that it gets either sent to you or to me, but know if you passed or failed. So if you didn't make it, you can reschedule it by Thursday. And then number three, 30 presentations and $300. Any questions for me? No questions whatsoever. Well, you know what? I want to thank you guys. It's raining here in California. Can you believe it? In Silicon Valley, it's actually raining outside. I don't mean a little drizzle either. It is actually raining. So that's a really good thing. I know a lot of you live in other places where you get rain all the time. We do not. So we're really... Yeah, Arizona. There you go. See, we throw a happy dance when we get a little bit of rain. Anyway, I want to thank all of you for your time. Again, I know it's tough to sit through an entire day listening to my voice, which is why I try to get the guest speakers to drop in so we can hear other folks. For those people who want to stick around and do a little bit of practice with closing or anything else, I am here, so feel free to step up. Again, thanks a lot for your time. We'll see you tomorrow morning.